How are you? Craig? That's how it be. Good. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. Uh, I'm real excited because I have the most complex setup ever, pretty much. I have my OBS going over here. I have StreamYard going over here. I'm doing sh screen sharing to Craig and also to all of you. And then Craig's also sharing my his screen to me. But then also mm -hmm. I'm going to be sharing it through OBS at wet as well is kind of bananas. Um, there we go. Loud and clear. Cool. Thank you. Yay. We can hear everybody. Perfect. Nice. Um, Craig, Craig and I are friends. We've been friends for almost a decade. Mm -hmm. I believe that, uh, Craig and I worked together at Xamarin, yes. came along it's to the cool. Microsoft. So oh, nice. We got a little subscription. Oh my goodness. Let me put this emotes alert above. Oh my gosh. Man, I haven't streamed in so long. Um, Jens, thank you so much for the two month subscription. Oh my goodness. Nice. Um, it's been a while. I haven't, I haven't been streaming. You've been streaming, Craig. Maybe people don't know who Craig is. Craig, what do you do at the Microsofts and what are you about? So, as you said, uh, we used to work together at Xamarin. So I'm all about cross-platform mobile development. I love iOS, I love Android. And I moved over to the Surface Duo team. So this is a Surface Duo device. It bends in the middle and it runs Android, which is great. Um, so I work on this team and, you know, we're all about getting developers and their apps migrated over to work on Surface Duo as well as, you know, all the other Android devices out there and the other foldables out there as well. So we like to share code snippets and examples uh, and SDKs uh, to help folks get their apps enhanced, adapted, responsive to foldable devices, uh, kind of no matter what platform they're using, whether it's Kotlin or Java, Unity, React Native, and of course, C Sharp and Xamarin. Cool. So you're you're sort of responsible of helping every single Android developer out there make their applications be awesome on foldable devices, and not so not just the the Duo basically, but any foldable device. Yeah, definitely. We're trying to get everyone over onto the Google default SDK uh, Jetpack Windows Manager, um, which gives you great experience on Surface Duo, but also those other foldable devices, um, and just generally make the ecosystem good for everyone. Gotcha. So can you talk a little bit about the history of this device and the SDKs and sort of where it's been, where it's going? Because you said there's new stuff that's coming out. Like it seems like things have changed a little bit. Yeah. So on the SDK side, definitely uh, Google just released the beta version of Windows Manager, which is the kind of cross-platform generic SDK you can use to incorporate into your apps for the Surface Duo, but also for other, you know, the foldable devices that are out there that the sideways ones and the flip style ones uh, can all use that same SDK. But to rewind back to the start of the question, uh, Surface Duo has been out for about a year, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, available to buy last September. Um, it was actually officially announced almost a year before that in a really cool like preview video that the Panos did kind of the previous October. Um, which was a really big surprise, caught a lot of people by surprise. It's like, oh, cool, Microsoft's building a phone. It's going to be a dual screen device. It's going to run Android. And like everyone's minds kind of went. <laughs> and, you know, if you look for Microsoft and dual screen devices on uh, Google, you'll actually find like there was a prototype even 10 years before that called the Microsoft Courier. Mm. Um, which is a concept video that you can still find if, if you search for it. And it's kind of amazing to see a lot of the things that were in that concept video from the early 2010s um, actually like in a real device now in, in like the 2020s, uh, including the two screens, like the multitasking, the drag and dropping, the using a pen, all that stuff. So it's an interesting idea to get maximal screen real estate, but in a device that, that still fits in your pocket. And, you know, I guess we had to wait until now for the technology to make it like four millimeters thin, yeah, um, but also capable enough to run Android and uh, you know all of the apps that you love from Microsoft, all of the apps on Google Play. Um, so, yeah, it's been out for about a year. We've spent all of that time um, building out SDKs and samples uh, for the native devs using Java and Kotlin, but also for all of the cross-platform tools that can target Android so that the whole ecosystem can move forward uh, and build their apps and make them enhanced for the dual screen device. Yeah, it seems like quite a challenge because obviously like a lot of what I do on this channel is straight Xamarin and soon to be .NET MAUI work, but 
you know, there's a vast array of different types of applications, whether it be progressive web apps or Kotlin apps or Java apps or React Native apps or Flutter apps, right? They're all of them out there. Um, right. And Chicken asks in the, in the chat here, good question. It says, can you define foldable? Is that multi-screen? Is that that it actually folds? Like, is it a tablet? Like, is it the, the, the what does it mean, right? Because when I open this up, it's kind of a, like a seven inch tablet in a way, but we're defining that as a foldable or a dual screen. Like, how is it defined? Would you say yeah, that? I think um, the best definition is like, yeah, any device that folds. Um, and so to point out like the ones currently on the market, obviously we have the Surface Duo, which is two distinct screens. Um, so you can see there's two distinct screens and they have a really neat hinge yeah. uh, that lets it go from zero kind of all the way around to 360. So it literally, you know, folds all the way. Um, so this is the, this is the device that, you know, we love. Um, but there are other foldable devices. So Samsung has, uh, what they call their galaxy Z fold, fold. <laughs> which is a similar style of device, uh, that kind of folds along its long axis, but the screen is bendable. So it actually looks like a single screen that you've got, um, that the device still folds, but you know, the screen is continuous gotcha. and they also have another device called the galaxy Z flip. And it's like your old Motorola razor style, you know, so it's a tall skinny thing and the fold is on the short axis. And so it kind of like opens up like this. Um, I don't have any of those around to, to kind of hold up, but all three of those different devices, uh, we include under this umbrella, they can all use Jetpack window manager, uh, to detect the fold and to help you move, move elements of your user interface around when they're on a folding device and when the device is folded versus when it's flat. So when we talk about foldable and dual screen, we're kind of encompassing all of those different devices. Um, and, uh, the Jetpack window manager, which Google makes available is the API that you can use to, to build that code that, that works on all of them. Got it. That makes sense. So, uh, so basically there's a bunch of different devices out there now and the duo is one of those devices. And what you're saying is that there's sort of SDKs that can target all of those. So yep. if I, if I optimize my app for the duo, I'm actually optimizing it for all foldable devices. Yeah. When you're using Jetpack window manager, Got exactly. It. Jetpack window manager is what, what it is. And that's kind of like, Maybe also probably people like I talk about the Android support libraries. Can you talk about Jetpack and what that actually is? Yeah. So I guess uh, Jetpack is the modern version of Android support libraries. Like in the back in the day, it used to be Android support libraries and it was difficult keeping track of the version of the support libraries you're using. And particularly for Xamarin, we were very careful to kind of try and keep them all in sync and then jump to the next version when we could do that. Uh, Jetpack is a new style of Android support library. Um, which is a lot easier to use. It's a lot more virgin, version agnostic, hmm. uh, kind of as long as you're building with the latest compiler, you can actually build and use the Android X components to, um, get functionality that works on a whole range of API levels. Um, gotcha. you know, and certainly all of the modern ones. So when we say Jetpack, uh, those libraries are typically in the Android X namespace and they just bring in functionality that, you know, works on the modern uh, latest version of the OS, but often it has a, um, what's the way you, you say, like it regresses back the API versions and still provides some level of functionality. Yeah. So you can bring in Jetpack window manager and get the ability to scan for, um, or listen for changes in the hinge. Uh, but it also provides you with screen dimensions. And if you were using an older SDK or on a single screen mm -hmm. device, you can still use those like screen, like size APIs and, you know, they still work on everywhere. So Got you it. can kind of, and then it upscales when you're on a foldable device, you get that additional information. Gotcha. That sounds good. And, you know, the reason that I wanted to have you on specifically is because for the last, well, 10 years, we've been friends. You're only one of the only people that I've seen during the pandemic. Um, and, uh, it's been fun to watch different collaborations like that, that you've done that we've done together. You've done with like the Xamarin team. Uh, and I'm always interested in, it's like, I have this device. And in fact, you unlock this device, you had, you were just gone in and you, you went and grabbed this. It was locked away for a year and a half in Redmond. Um, and I just hadn't gone into the office. You, you got it and you helped me upgrade it. We had super secret, crazy pre-release 2019 software on this thing. Um, so I've, I've had a service duo. It's just been locked in quarantine for so long, which is hilarious, but now it's running the latest software and, and I've been playing around with it. I'm very excited. I might use this as my just main work machine in tune and all and all jazz but 
I've been sort of a holdout because not on on the duo or, or or dual screen devices but like doing anything in my apps because i don't have a lot of time i don't know like i don't know what the the struggle is that maybe you, you maybe have like talking to devs like what their challenges are but for me as an independent developer it's like time right it's like hard enough for me to release an ios and an android app but then i gotta do other stuff right is that a challenge that you see or is it like do you see big big companies like kind of going all in and like they want to introduce everything into their apps Yes, all of those things. <laughs> sure, I mean, there's, there's for sure um, like apps and, and folks that are like hot onto like every new thing, you know, they actually provide support for every new device that's out there. You know, they want to be on the top, they want to be on the flip, they want to be on the Surface Duo. Uh, and, you know, they have the developer team and probably, you know, they have the architecture that means they can easily extend and adapt their UI for, for all of those different devices. So, you know, there's a point at which, you know, your app is heavily grid-based, for example, following along from that web concept of grids and responsiveness. Um, and you're heavily using fragments, so you've already things are in reusable components. Mm. Uh, you're probably going to find it easier to adapt to all those different things, you know, to, to on the Surface Duo, put the two fragments side by side, and maybe on the uh, Samsung Flip, put them one above the other. And, you know, then on a tablet, put three side by side, you know. Uh, if you've already got an app that's, Kind of planned for that kind of responsiveness. Uh, adding support for a dual screen and service dual and foldables is probably going to be easier than, you know, maybe an app that was, you know, the original architecture was set in stone six, seven years ago. I mean, those apps are still around. Um, they're heavily activity based. Um, they're, you know, a lot of the UX is hard coded in XML, and some of those people need to tease apart a bit in order to be able to adapt them for a dual screen. Uh, and also to adapt for tablets and, you know, stuff appearing on Chromebooks, desktop, that sort of thing. Yeah. So a lot of it depends on the architecture of the app and you know, how much time and effort people have. Gotcha. Yeah. And that um, seems, seems to be like my big struggle is it is that I've never optimized for tablet either. Like I've done some blog posts about it, but it's like, I just, I don't, I'm not a tablet person. You know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. care. I carry just a phone around with me. That seems to be the biggest challenge I have is like, if I'm not living it and breathing it, then I don't like actually... Yeah like do it right because like if, if this was your main device right every single day like the, the duo or a go fold or a flip you're you're gonna want to optimize it for like what you have so like living and breathing it is actually like the best way of of doing that and that was a big thing is remember i I've, I've, i was an android card carrying member for uh over a decade and then last year i got the se2 and um, obviously immediately shattered all the screens on the bottom and all the good stuff not the front but just the back um, and I continuously drop it all the time. And, uh, and now I really want to optimize my applications for iOS because I've already sort of mastered the look and feel on Android. Like I did it for a decade, right? That's where I was very comfortable with. Now it's like, mm -hmm. oh, now I know really what iOS should look like. Um, and when I'm using it, maybe I'm getting better. So, yeah. Yeah. I think that we're kind of going to segueing into a really interesting element of like Xamarin, Xamarin Forms and the two pane view layout, which is the control that we built and made available for, for dual screen development. Mm. And that is that um, it's an, it's a control that's kind of optimized for dual screen development, but it actually works fine and enables scenarios for just your regular phones and for tablets. Like it's, a package that has the concept of two panes and it, they sit very well side by side on, on a Surface Duo or in another foldable. But, you know, they provide you with a, a level of layout control where you can put them on a single screen, one above the other, or you could squeeze them in side by side, or you could use one screen, one pane and, and slide the other one in over the top. Or in a tablet, you could just have them side by side and on a 30-70 split or something like that. Got it. So that's one of the approaches we take when we're talking to folks uh, about enhancing their app for this new category that kind of sits in the middle of a phone like this and a tablet like this is that dual screen and foldable devices are both like they all fold or show like what looks like a regular phone screen in, in some form or another uh, like the surface duo folds all the way around and then you just use one side of it or you open it up like that the samsung uh, galaxy fold has a screen on the outside that does that same kind of effect so these devices are in the middle and thinking about that and creating layouts that adapt in that, you know, classic web 
CSS style of adapt, adapting and being responsive to the UI, UX works fine, narrow, wide across two screens, or even wider on a tablet. Uh, and if you can think about that when you're designing or updating one of your screens, uh, you kind of get, you know, three for one. Gotcha. Uh, you can get an updated UX on a single screen uh, and get it on the Fold and, and the Surface Duo and tablets. And, you know, there's so many more Chromebooks around <laughs> than there were two years ago, you know, yeah. the explosion of them in education, uh, in cheap, like enterprise deployments, um, Android apps being available on there. Um, that's becoming a new category as well. So we don't just even think about tablets. It's like Android is on desktops. Yeah. Um, and while we can't actually talk about anything in Windows 11, because I have no idea about how anything in Windows 11 is going to work at all, because um, I'm still on Windows 10. Um, I have a Windows 11 on a bunch of other machines, but just, you know, normal public builds. Um, you know, Android apps are going to run on Windows soon, which is pretty awesome. And I have no idea about any of that, nor are we going to talk about any of it. Uh, but here's a good question from Chicken Wing in the chat, since things have evolved a little bit. Um, it's asking, they used to, he said I was, uh, he or she was, said I was advised to use Media Router to support dual screen, which is a PAX E800 device. I don't even know what that is. I have to look that up. I tried the Service Duo SDK, but it didn't work. That was a few months ago. Um, what is advised? Media router? What is media router? Is is what's kind of the 2021, late 2020? We'll kind of go with Apple models, late 2021 um, recommendation <laughs> here. Yeah. Media router um, sounds like it's going to be more for dual screens where you can actually, a lot of Android devices can have uh, additional screens, like you can plug in, have an external screen. So that probably goes back to that question we talked about earlier about defining dual screen. Um, maybe we should have also been clear that what we're not talking about is dual displays, like multiple displays, like uh, situations where you can connect, um, and project, you know, a second monitor, uh, to your Android device, uh, which will allow, you know, activities that are running from some apps to appear on other apps. Got it. So yeah, this is the PAX. Not, this is not a dual screen device in this regard for like what right. we're talking about it, today. Yeah. So that's a good question because it helps us to, to clarify that um, all of the devices we're talking about, the Samsungs and, and the Microsoft Surface Duo are foldable devices where the, the screen that we're talking about, whether it's one or two, is contained within the device. And apps can use the whole thing, like they can effectively be maximized, uh, to use Windows term, across the whole device. That concept of having, you know, an additional uh, external screen plugged in is a separate um, area that you can still build with Android, obviously, but that's not what the, the Surface Duo SDK nor Jetpack Windows Manager is about. There you go, perfect. Uh, 3D Poly asks, will Don and Maui support dual screen? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> it's a, a part of Xamarin Forms, obviously. And if you follow the, like the Surface Duo developer team, uh, I recently shared on our blog that we've got a binding for a Jetpack Window Manager that brings the Jet, Jetpack Window Manager SDK into Xamarin. Mm. Uh, so, you know, we've got that available on NuGet. If you search for xamarin.androidx.window, uh, that package does provide this SDK into uh, C Sharp. So that's really the foundation of making it available in, in .NET MAUI going forward. Um, so while .NET MAUI is in preview, as, as you all know, uh, we're still building it out and adding and finishing off stuff. So I guess that's something to, to look out for. And I've mentioned this to people that have asked on Twitter, you know, the minute it's available, you know, I'll be tweeting it, I'll be blogging about it. James will probably be doing the same. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and this is cool too, because like you just came out with a blog post uh, yesterday. Let me go ahead and pop this over here. Um, is, you know, you had one about Unity and Jetpack. There's like different applications that were built. There's like the, I'd have to find to go back a little bit in here, but here's, yeah, Jetpack Window Manager Alpha Update, uh, Developer Tool. So if you're interested at all in this, I think my favorite one is, maybe is it on page three now? Uh, what's the <laughs> one, Xamarin? I just found it for someone else. They were looking at it. Uh, where is it at? Maybe page four? Depends when they... Oh, definitely. I'm getting there. You know what I'm talking about. It's that one app that they built. Where is it at? Maybe page five. You guys are doing a lot of blogs. Um, oh, yeah. We're blogging all the things. Well, the thing is, we, you know, in addition to uh, Google moving so fast with Jetpack Window Manager, they have a control sliding pane layout that's also enhanced 
for, for dual screens. Yeah. Um, we also have all of these other platforms that we want to support, Flutter, React Native, Xamarin, Unity, uh, and the web. So, you know, there's always something to talk about for a dual screen uh, that's going to help someone in the developer community. Yeah, and this goes is the Sketch 360, which is an open source app built with Xamarin Forms and Skia Sharp. I'll excuse your incorrect, um, um, or their incorrect Xamarin Forms uh, without the dot, but that's okay. Uh, but this is really cool. It's a garage project, right? Yes. Yeah, it actually started out as a Windows app. So it's all C-sharp, obviously, from its from its beginnings. And after the Surface Duo came out, Michael, the developer, ported that Windows app onto Surface Duo and the two screens using Xamarin Forms and, and using Two-Pane View uh, and, you know, the pen capabilities. And it's a really nice... Um, implementation like James mentioned it's open source you can actually go and see there uh, so there's a lot of code and he did what I was just mentioning in terms of using two pane view so that when you're on a single screen the things are laid out one above the other because you you just want the mini you know you want the same UX but smaller and then when you get onto uh, service duo it they just span out to be side by side um, you know so very little work required from him to respond to the, the size of device that he's on that's cool. Um, the one thing that I've always been, and what I kind of wanted to try to do today, besides doing a live Q and A and going through stuff with you, is that I've been a little concerned, which is that I have my app, my cadence. So I'll pop mm -hmm. this into the chat, and I've um, recently just came out with a latest release of it, and I was just working on it for about the last four or five months, and I introduced a bunch of new features uh, into it. Actually, so it has like a full. Uh, database of people that know about this, I've been building a little bit on stream too, but it basically enables you to connect a little sensor uh, when you're riding an indoor cycle bike and it'll show you your cadence or how fast you're going over and over. And what I recently did is um, I got a lot of feedback from some Android users that were like, oh, it doesn't look great when it's actually half screen, like, you know, cause you can actually make Android apps half the, the width mm -hmm. of a portrait. Uh, or if it's in landscape. So I made some optimizations to the UI there. So it gave more room. You can actually see like this is a little small. So I moved some elements up a little bit. And then I also added this feature, which was like um, history. So this is, you know, full history of every single ride. And you can go into details with charts and graphs. Um, but you can imagine that that I'm thinking about two two things already, which is one on this main screen here, um, there's actually other bits of information that appear when mm -hmm. you're in pro mode. So it actually shows you how long you've been cycling, how many rotations you've been doing, um, some other or, or average cadence as well. And then also like this, these are two pages, like you have to like tap and go into it and man, it sure would be great to get that on one side and one side automatically. So those are the kind of like the two optimizations that I've been thinking about, especially these two new pages, cause they're very MVVM and very streamlined where the home page is a hot mess it's just a disaster of code because <laughs> i wrote the entire app in like a minute basically um let's see before we go on so my, my hope here was ask your questions live i'll try to MC it with craig um uh here and since craig and i've been friends forever this should probably be a super casual conversation then I'll, I'll take a look at the chat and ask questions but i also want to actually get into some code maybe just explore the two pane view by itself do some file new and you can walk me through it because it's been a long time since i did it and demoed it um mm -hmm. and then maybe we can take a look at my app and see if there's possibilities to, to actually get it going let's see um m covey and the chat says i'm m covuka for the moment i started using duda i've been struck with this feeling that it's uh, a kind of a device foldables that can finally be useful for work. I was wondering what your views are, James and Craig. Do you see foldables as another form factor between tablets and smartphones or a dedicated segment? Ooh, this is great. Let me get into the other view so then we can, let me go over here. This might, this might, I like to do these snapshots. Okay, so it's gonna be, um, here's a question, all right. From Macovio. Um, They've been using the Duo and they were struck with this feeling that foldables and these types of dual screen devices are very useful, especially in work scenarios. They're wondering what are our views, James and Craig, experts in the field. Do you see foldables as another form factor between tablets and smartphones or a dedicated segment of devices which can do completely new things that the other two form factors don't allow for? Ooh, if the latter, what excites you? Wow, uh, that's a there's a lot into that. Um, I think the answer is 
kind of a bit of both. Like it, it is a new form factor. And I think, you know, the obvious reasoning behind that is that it's the size of a phone, right? So when it's folded, this one or, or the other ones in the category, it will still fit in your pocket, right? It's, it's inherently portable in a way that a, that a tablet generally isn't because, you know, even the smallest of tablets generally isn't going to fit into your pocket unless you're, you know, a fan of cargo pants. So, you know, it's going to be with you in many more places than a tablet would be. Um, and, but then when it's, when you're using it, it has as much space as a tablet. Um, so, you know, if you want to do real work, real work in, in air quotes, um, you know, there's enough space on the screen to be able to see that. And kind of furthermore, like even versus having a tablet, there's a few areas and times where this form factor, where having something kind of folded over like this um, can be super helpful. So one of them is like just participating in a Teams meeting or a conference call, uh, Zoom, any other like trademarked like video calling thing that you want to mention. Um, the, the, the Surface Duo and, and other foldables can sit propped up on a desk or propped up on a windowsill or something very neatly with the front facing camera looking at you uh, and the, the meeting happening in front of you and with a whole other screen to type chat, um, you know, to, to view a PowerPoint, to do whatever you want to do, you know, in a way that you would do on a desktop, like you'd be multitasking, you'd have two windows open side by side, right? Um, and this form factor lets you do that in a mobile way that is much harder to do on any, you know, candy stick style, you know, single screen phone. And the, the same kind of goes for um, actually working. So I've seen people tweeting at us, you know, I love when people tweet at us the use cases for the device um, and folks are using um, VS Code online via GitHub, you know, code spaces. Um, and they're actually just got a web browser with code, you know, backed by, you know, a server-based um, VM. And that's the whole top screen, like a, mm. a view of their like website. And the keyboard's on the bottom and they're doing, you know, you're not going to code like that for eight hours a day, but to jump in and do a quick code review or a spelling check or, you know, for small development tasks, uh, it's much more doable uh, in, on this kind of device uh, in this posture than, you know, a tablet is, is a bit clumsier because you're, you're typing like this and a phone, you just don't have enough space yeah. to be able to do both of those things. So, I think that the the form factor and the questions asking about um, being useful for work, I think that it is a lot more useful for for a lot of those ways. Um, and even just having two apps side by side, like the, the ability to drag and drop from PowerPoint into Outlook and from Outlook into your Outlook calendar, um, the the style of work that you do on your desktop when you have multiple screens open and kind of referring to data between them is, is a lot easier on this uh, than a regular phone. Um, and it's about the same as a tablet, you know, tablets have that multitasking ability as well. But again, it comes back to this goes in your pocket and, and it's always with you. So it's, you know, it's not, you know, revolutionary in terms of, you know, uh, it just does a lot of things better than one or the other of the, the, you know, phone or, or tablet device. So, and I'm really interested to see, you know, people will continue to think of new ways to, to take this form factor into, um, more productivity scenarios and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it reminds me a lot of when Nintendo came out with the Nintendo DS, the dual screen device. And it was this, hey, no portable before had ever been, you know, a dual screen, never really had a touch screen. I mean, there were some, but yeah. combine this technology into one. And it was up to the developers to make software and games for that device that unlocked its potential. I think the, the dual screen devices today have the advantage that you can do some scenarios and apps work out of the box in many scenarios like you were just describing, right? One, like you said, you can just use this device as a phone in a single in a single fashion. Here, same thing with all the Samsung devices. Like it is can be just a phone if that's your scenario that you want to use it for the most. But I don't use my phone as a phone. I never try, I try to take phone calls on my, my computer if I can. Where I think the other scenario is what you're talking about is that Already applications will just kind of work out of the box to do split screen or side by side. Or another advantage of, of that is like multiple tabs on multiple sides. Uh, my wife was just returning some merchandise. She needed to go online to the you know, online chat to chat with them about a refund. And she, had, she tried to do it on her iPhone, 
Um, and, and basically it says, you know, do not like press any buttons. Don't go anywhere. Don't do anything. Like if you close this chat window and that's not what it's made for, it's made for a pop-up on, on a, on a desktop. I switch you had to go over there and do that. Not to say that it's impossible to do on your iPhone or your Android, just normal phone, but having the ability to do multiple things or have that space that something isn't going to come up and interrupt it is really nice. Um, but yeah, I think that, that it's more than just the work scenario. I think you can see the game scenarios for it. Mm -hmm. And of course I think, yeah, definitely as a companion, but the key of it is for these devices that it's one less device to carry around. Mm -hmm. If that's your scenario, like if you are a tab, if you're always carrying around a tablet and a phone, it can re you know replace that into a singular form factor to be a companion, um, to your main desktop setup. So for me, I am excited about them. I'll be even more excited as we're seeing more come out. I think that's what excites me about it as we see the innovation coming from, um, from not only from the Surface Duo team, but also from Samsung and other vendors that are out there creating devices. Because the more there are, the more in, you know encouragement that means mm -hmm. for developers to go create and up, you know, enhance their applications for it. Because the, the one thing that you don't want to have is, and what my fear is, if we test my cadence on my device, is they put it into the dual screen longer form and then it's a bad experience and that you get a one-star review for that device you're going to be encouraged to go update your application for mm -hmm. it uh, but i don't see these devices going anywhere because forever we've been enthralled with multi-display phones and tablets if you think of west world with the folding out tablets the three mm -hmm. screens that are on there right where we we love them. that's why we love our tablets they close down they open up so to me, they're here for the long term. I think we're just going to see more innovation in the space. They're going to get thinner. They're going to get lighter. They're going to have more features and gizmos on them. And uh, they'll be nice. And especially if you look at like the full, is that full? Like the third version of it or whatever? Second or second or third? Yeah, third. Yeah, no, they, they just released the full three yeah. maybe a month ago. So it's like you continue to see the innovation there. So that's that's my answer there. Yeah. Um, Actually, why, before we move on, I can't believe I forgot gaming. Like Xbox Game Pass like was out maybe six months ago now for the Surface Duo. And in that situation, like you're streaming games like from, you know, the cloud on the top screen and the controller is on the bottom screen and the controller is adapting to the game style that you're playing. And the like you easily just search for Game Pass Surface Duo, uh, you'll see videos and, and folks using it everywhere, but it's an amazing experience. Just today, someone was tweeting about Xbox Game Pass on the Surface Duo at the beach, um, which is like totally separately, like you can spend hours just playing games in, in, in this form factor and uh, having a good experience. So yeah, there's stuff that, you know, you didn't originally think of that, that it unlocks. Now I got to go install Game Pass on my yep. Xbox app on there. Awesome. Uh, we got a bunch of other questions. Oh my goodness, there's so many questions. Um, hopefully that, that answered their question. With the whole point of forms being shared, do we think iOS will ever migrate to foldables? You'll have to ask iOS about that formal. Um, I don't know. Well, there's an Apple event in, in four days. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Are you? I'm excited for it. I mean, I think Boy. we're I think we're just going to get, what is it, iPhone 13? I don't think there's going to be anything special. And maybe a new watch, right? So. Yep, yep, always. Yeah, I, the, I mean, the question ends with uh, it feels Android specific. Um, I guess, like, yeah, because all of the phones are our Android phones right now. The ICO, iPhone ecosystem is one manufacturer. Yeah. But, um, you know, if it becomes hugely popular on Android, you know, that's going to be hard for, you know, other OEMs to ignore whether it's Apple or not. So who's to say? But um, if you're building, for example, Xamarin Forms, you're still trying to do that responsive design between the SE phone, which is four inches and the pro max phones, which is six inches. And then the iPad mini, which is like six and a half inches yeah. <laughs> and you know, right up to the iPad pro, which is 12. So the actual thinking that I've described earlier, where you actually want to try and have a user experience that, that scales through all of those, uh, you can do that and have it work on iOS and Android. And also within this little niche of, you know, Android foldables. Um, so even though the, the folding bit is, um, Android specific for now, the, the thinking about responsive apps and responsive layouts, I think applies to both ecosystems. And if you're on camera and forms, you're building for both uh, and controls like two pane view are, are going to be able to help you. Uh, even if you don't particularly care about <laughs> the surface duo right now. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think that that's a good point is like, I want to take the app. If I do some optimizations, just open it on my iPad, which is actually what I use to cycle on and then see what it looks like. Cause that could be pretty nice. Um, let's see. Spanish asks, 
This isn't specifically related to Duo, more general for newer dev. If I have some dynamically generated code, oh, you're just going in the weeds. I don't know. It isn't asking me anything. I realize like, uh, if I have some dynamically generated code based on say a class and I realize later I need to change the class's name, how do I go about fixing that? Oh, you just right click and reform, reformat in Visual Studio. Yeah, refactor, yeah. Yeah, refactor, you right name, rename, and it goes through your entire project and boom, hopefully. Um, cool, All right, some good insights. Okay, cool. All right, Craig, let's yeah. do something. Where do I need to go on the internet to make this happen? Good question. So I think if you want to start at docs.microsoft.com slash dual screen with a dash. Dual screen. Dual dash screen. Got it. Right. And so this is uh, like foldable and dual screen central. Um, so we've got a lot of links here. It's broken up by platform. So there's a card for all of the different areas that we support. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there for Java and Kotlin devs, obviously. Um, and there's a section there for Xamarin. So if you dive into that, um, we cover just the stuff that's relevant for Surface Duo development. Okay. And then kind of links off to, you know, the actual Xamarin documentation, which is like another thousand plus pages <laughs> over in docs.microsoft.com slash Xamarin. Um, so if you go into there though, you can see there's a link to two pane view. Uh, there's a link to dual screen info. And oh, those yeah. are yep. probably the controls that you would want to start with. Uh, if you're a Xamarin Forms developer. Okay, got it. So let me go ahead and post a, I'll post a link here into the chat, just so everyone kind of grab that here. So what is, um, so then I also see there's Jetpack Window Manager for Xamarin. Yep. And that's so different that's, than the other ones? Yeah, so Jetpack Window Manager for Xamarin was what I touched on earlier. That's the binding for Jetpack Window Manager that takes that Android SDK that Google's provided and surfaces it into C Sharp. So at the moment, it's an Android only API that you can use today. In, if you're doing a Xamarin.Android app, for example, like not forms, but like a, a real Xamarin Android app, you can use Jetpack Window Manager today and you can build an app that, that um, adapts to the Surface Duo and to the Samsungs and, and other foldable devices. Got it. So that's the foundation that we wanna take into Xamarin Forms that we wanna take into .NET MAUI. Um, but for now, publicly, we only have that release available. So Got it. Uh, yeah. all the details are there. We have samples. Um, but for now, the Jetpack Window Manager support is for Xamarin Android devs only. Got it. Xamarin Form support, which is in two pane view and dual screen info, is currently Surface Duo specific. So it's okay. a cross platform API, it's a control and a, and a non visual helper class that will you know run on all devices like it's not going to crash if you're on ios or anything but it lights up on the surface duo and gives you that automatic you know hinge detection and, and laying out got it uh, and on other devices it'll do proportional or, or whatever you like so those are the two controls that i think we would start with using xamarin forms now and you know in the future xamarin forms will be able to adapt to, to more classes of device as jetpack window manager moves up the stack Got it. Because that's just still even from Google as in preview or alpha today, right? Correct. Got yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. We really want that to be stable before we would, you know, make it, put it into Xamarin Forms yeah. um, or, or .NET MAUI. So that makes sense. Uh, there is some dependency there. All right. Formal asks, do we need to get a dual screen emulator? Um, yes. There is a use the emulator button. There is. So there are. If you're using uh, Xamarin for Android, you've already installed like the Android SDK and the latest versions of the Android SDK include a couple of foldable emulators mm. that mimic the Samsung Galaxy fold and flip. So you can grab them, you know, they're already available in your Android SDK install if you've got kind of the latest versions. Okay. For Xamarin, uh, for <laughs> Surface Duo, we actually have our own emulator download. So from okay. where James is the link that he posted earlier, just go over to the Surface Duo emulator button and download our image. Uh, and it gives you a better experience because it includes all of our enhancements that, that are on the Surface Duo. Got it. Uh, so if you download that, um, that will start up. It starts up like a regular Android emulator. You can pick it then in your Visual Studio device list to deploy to. Um, it's free, obviously, it runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux, um, so you can use it anywhere. 
um, and that gives you the experience of uh, using Service Duo. Uh, the emulator that we ship also includes a pile of sample apps that we've built, so you can play around with them as well oh, and compare cool. sample code on, on GitHub. Okay, gotcha. Or I could plug in my Duo, and then I can open Visor, and then it should sure. show yeah. up. Because it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a full thing. Oh, here it is. So I can open it, and there it is. Yes, there is the Surface Duo uh, screen share. <laughs> kind of looks like a laptop because you don't see the hinge here because Visor yeah. isn't showing you that. But there's a, a gap there, obviously, that, 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 that exists. And that's, that would be the advantage of using like the emulator, I assume, that you can see the hinge, move the hinge, do a bunch of stuff with the hinge. Right. Yeah, it's free and you can see the hinge. And in the properties window of the emulator, you also can, can fold it and see a 3D preview of what it looks like folded as well. Oh, cool. So you can also test out, you know, how does it look um, when, when you're like this, you know, what happens to the app? So should I download this? Is this the thing? Sure. I can put it up on my screen if you feel like we're doing it live, <laughs> doing it live. Well, do I have to restart my computer? That's the question. Uh, you shouldn't have to for the, it's just an image. It's actually just running like the Android emulator. Uh, emulator without image. Ah, okay. So that's cool. That's good to know. Okay, cool. Let's see what yeah. happens here. Uh, internet speeds happening. Okay. Doing it live. It's happening. Well, you know, Check. why not? Press. And come on XE. There we go. Opening. I open it twice. Let's see here. That's okay. It's only There's... like hundred meg. Yeah. Oh, I did open it twice. Okay. Cancel. Cancel yes. once. Okay, here we go. Just it's... looking through the other questions. Every time one of these comments says, do you like coffee? I think, yes, I like coffee. <laughs> yeah, you like that? I like my, autom my automatic subscribe. No one's ever subscribed, so I never get any referral credits. But <laughs> my yes, please coffee did ship today. So I'm excited that it'll come next week. So I'm almost out of coffee. I'll probably have to walk to the store and get coffee because we drank all the coffee that you gave us. So obviously oh. it didn't last very long because it was just nonstop. Yeah, it never so. does. Okay, cool. But at the same time, because I have obviously my dual screen device here, uh, over here, I, I can just start developing. Just, just Vortex, yeah, sure. thank you for the subscription. Appreciate that. Nice. My nice. subscription's got to call them out. So this is installing. So I got to go file new project. I can just do new project, right? Yep. Okay. And then Xamarin Forms, right? Xamarin Forms. Because that, that's what my other one, that's what mine is. Mobile. Yep. There's all new ones. I, now I'd have, I gotta, I gotta admit that I gotta put Xamarin.com. Uh, I, I gotta admit that I have installed, um, all the Maui stuff on here. So I'm just going to assume that all this stuff works. <laughs> we'll just do a blank app just cause it'll be, it'll be to the, to the, the core here. So. Let's see. It's a big image. Yeah, it's a, it's you know it's basically our whole OS, right? So um, you'll notice when you use the the Xamarin, I keep saying Xamarin and Surface Duo interchangeably because we're talking everything. I think is Xamarin. Um, if you grab the Surface Duo emulator and you're running it um, like you're about to on your your Windows or Mac, uh, it's you know it's a complete reproduction of the Surface Duo device in the emulator. So when I talk about those other Samsung ones, it's not actually everything that ships with the Samsung. You know, the two emulators that Google has in the Android SDK emulate the screen size of the flip and the fold and the and their ability to fold. But you know, it doesn't include all of the one UI enhancements that Samsung ships or you know anything like that, because yeah. it's you know Google's like high level approximation of those devices. But the reason why we ship this for you to download is it's 100% the Surface Duo. It has all of the enhancements that we include. Uh, you know, it ships with SwiftKey by default, which is the default keyboard on Surface Duo, um, the launcher that we use, and it has the specific gestures that we've added for in interacting with the dual screen. So swiping and holding to move apps across the screen and stuff like that. So that's kind of the reason why we have this separate download is so that we can ship something that's you know, high fidelity matches up with what you would get if you had the device. Got it. Got it. 
All right, we're going to see. I, I launched it from there. I'm assuming it should run on. I, I think I just have Hyper-V enabled, so it should boot up, I assume. Should do. Should do. It's a good start. It's a good start, at least. And I see there's another button over here. This is like a... Right. So that's the Foley button. Yeah. So if you if you look there, there's an option for folding, and it's in the hinge drag thing at the bottom. So if you drag that slider, oh. and then yeah, and then you can actually shift the thing around in the preview, and you can yeah, just gimbal away. Whoa. Yeah, I always need a reset button. Yeah. There well, we just go. click one of those. There we go. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, and it's like, and things are happening as I move it right so it even yeah closes turns off one screen if you flip all the way around which is uh, again mimicking real device behavior so this is why we have a separate download is so that you can get all of that like functionality one-to-one -one with the device got it that's cool all right i need to get it back open it yeah all right open it and then close because oh oh hours can, of fun i can yeah basically this is the stream is me playing around with the all right, perfect. Now we have this here. Okay, cool. So that's really helpful. So if you're testing it and want to do stuff, because now you can see the hinge. You can see the hinge. And if you do things differently, like sometimes the app changes when it's half folded versus when it's flat. Uh, so you can do that within your app, test, you know, the hinge angle changes and stuff like that. Look at that. Okay, so we got an app. All right, so now what do I need to do? I need to, I don't want to add an account. Okay, come on, and me later. <laughs> Uh, we'll see how like how well my machine does. Seeing I have like StreamYard, this, that, Visual Studio, emulators, um, all this stuff. So yeah. Tuna, is this the app that you made? Uh, so Tuna was actually built by our summer interns in 2020. Hmm. So they came online for three months. Uh, they learned Android development from scratch and basically built a clone of OneNote uh, that's optimized for dual screen devices. Um, it's super cool. It has that pen icon there. You can draw, um, it's got the share sheet. It does all the things. Oh, nice. um, yeah. So, but yeah, that's one of our samples. It, uh, obviously open source and. Oh, cool. So then I can drag it over and then boom. Yep. Boom. Got it. So basically this is what you're saying is like, if I go into the one pane, and I go yep. around, I'm just navigating like normal. This is just a normal app, right? I might as well be yeah, a normal list detail app. Uh -huh. I might as well be like this over yep. here, right? Cause it's just like this. And then if I open it up and I drag, this is the key is like this hinge right here. And it now yep. it's That's your, like maximize or span. Got it. And I can go away. Oh, interesting. It says, welcome to two note. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. So tap on that, get the stuff, make the drawing, do the things, add a note. Cool. Yep. I get it. I get it. Craig, I get it. Look at me draw. <laughs> I'm amazing. Uh, that's pretty cool. It like saves it. Cool. One note, two note. Awesome. Okay. I get it. Yeah. All right. We love the puns. Love we the also puns. have to do. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I have to do in here. Oh, I have intent. Oh, it may not be on the, it may not be on the emulator yet. Gotcha. Okay. The intent this year just built that. So got it. Okay. So now what do I need to do? I got, I have my, let's say just someone is like in here, they're doing stuff and this is all they got. What do they got, I got to do next? Cause I'm assuming if I, if I launch this app, let's just debug it. This is file new project. This is like what people get. Yep. It's not going to be great. It, yeah, it's, it's just going to be your regular Xamarin forms. App. It doesn't know anything. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. But yeah, otherwise it's a, it's a completely functional Android simulator, right? So if you were an Android dev, you can get your existing app, run it up on our emulator and, and get a sense for, you know, how your app is going to look uh, on the server. Uh, like, you can use it for any other Android testing you want to do as well. So that's cool. That's good to know. Like, yeah. So if you don't have a device, you can just simply yeah go to town basically and start it up. Let's see if this thing will, let's see how long it takes to build with all this stuff going on my machine. <laughs> um, yeah. I have the same thing on my streams. What are you going to do? So it does say that my machine is at 90, 100% CPU usage. So let's see. Nice. Although my stream seems not impacted. So that's great. No, no drop frames. I love it. Um, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with you. Seven year old machine that was built by not me. So it's got the power. It does. 
I'm I'm very very happy about this uh, about this. Uh, let's see what we wait here. 3D Polyrath says might join your YouTube members if I have one. I haven't set one up yet. I've been thinking about not streaming on Twitch and only streaming on YouTube. Whoa. It's in my mind. I might just drop a platform. It's hard to say. Um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't decided yet. Okay, cool. So anyways, we're in here. And if I drag it, amazing. Yep, just splash right across there. Yeah, does this happen to a lot of apps basically today? Like, is that like the default or like? Yeah, the default is the apps, you know, in general, it's good guidance for your Android apps to be resizable, like to be able to, you know, expand to fill any space because even on single screen phones, there's already a ridiculous number of different form factor shapes and aspect ratios and whatever. So most apps just try and fill the screen. And for a Surface Duo, when you manually move it onto both screens, it's just going to try and fill it. So by default, we always app open the app on one screen. So customers are never going to be like, oh, shoot, I can't read stuff under the hinge. They, they will have had to drag it themselves across, right? So yeah. the easiest thing for customers in that situation is they drag it back and yeah. then they just continue to use the app in, in single screen mode. But if you've done this extra work, if you've thought about it and you're detecting the hinges there, then you, know, you, you shift the stuff over or you split it in two. Uh, whatever you want to do. Got it. Oh, look at this. It's on me. Oh, skip that. I got a whole yeah, browser here. Edge. So Edge um, has its own dual screen support, which is exposed through CSS and JavaScript. Oh, cool. So it's a 100% like Chromium standard API that you can add some CSS classes that will tell you where the hinge is, and you can adapt your websites as well whenever they're on a foldable device. Nice. So um, it, it's also for web devs. So let's say I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready to dual screen, Craig. Now let's mm -hmm. say I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to dual screen. Let's. Oh, oh, something is happening. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna minimize uh, this. Uh, oh, authentication code. Nope. <laughs> I love. I love when it's when Visual Studio is like, give me your auth code. Okay, so I got to go install a package. Is what you're saying? Right. So yeah, go into NuGet, mm -hmm. and probably just for the whole solution because the package is is there, and then look for Xamarin Forms dual screen right there in the name got it now let me see what version of xamarin forms do i have installed just to match it i got two yeah. oh let me just upgrade those really quick just so i'm that, that could not possibly go wrong no so we have updates here i haven't up I, I, I gotta tell you craig i haven't i haven't updated to the latest latest bits i've been a little worried and by worried i mean not worried at all just like i haven't booted up visual studio in two weeks so there you go holiday and then just you know, manager you know you're a man you were a manager craig basically indeed just, just team you, you don't you do not code as much you do not code as much that's yeah. for sure you I, I joked with someone today our, my job is to figure out how fast i can hit the join button in teams um, <laughs> so xamarin.forms.dual and then let me get rid of the pre-release and i kind of glossed over it but like NuGet did a great job of that update like i will say that um you get is fantastic these days like, oh yeah for those you know people on the call that have lived with it since it started it's just leaps and bounds awesome in 2019. it's all about these package references um okay so also craig you live stream too don't you that I do. So uh, we do it through, I, uh, there's an account that I have, uh, Surface Duo Dev. So if you go to twitch.tv slash Surface Duo Dev, we stream every week and talk about all of the different topics that you see on our docs page. So we'll switch between Unity and Xamarin and Kotlin and Flutter um, and Web, uh, awesome. you know, what's the latest, what's new. Um, oh, there's you. Yeah. Right there. Oh, there we are. Four hours ago, you were streaming today. It was, yeah. In the so correct. Out at some point, it'll be from yeah talking since eleven this morning. In the correct new category that I just found out about. Yeah, that's cool. We no longer have to be talk show hosts. Yes, and we no longer have to be chickens and other things <laughs> that are on there too. Oh, and there's me. I'm live right now. Look at that. Oh my gosh, cool. So you're on there. I'll keep posting that as well. So keep that down there. Awesome. So I installed it. Okay. Now I gotta go into here. Now let's say I just have this one page. Do I create another page or do I install okay, so it? What if I what if I just want to like not do any dual screen stuff? I just want it's like to look and act the same. 
So what I would do if I were you would be go to that docs page that we saw earlier. Yeah. And not this one. Let me go back. Yeah, docs.microsoft.com slash dual screen slash Xamarin slash two pane view. Okay. Yeah, and I would just put that XAML. Okay. Um, you'll need to grab, yeah, the control. I would just put that XAML in the page and then sub in, like just put it at the top. Don't replace it because we'll, we'll reuse that stack layout. Okay. Yeah. Put it at the top there and then go back and get the namespace. Check this out, Craig. I don't even have to. Visual Studio does it for me. Boom. Visual Studio is, yeah, it's way smarter than me. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to run this. Let's just run this and see what happens yep. for like the default. So this mm -hmm. is just, there's a pane one and a pane two, pane one content, pane two content. I understand that. Yeah. And well, it's going to work on any platform. It's going to work on iOS. It's going to work on Android. It's going to work on WinUI. So is that the concept? Because I would imagine that it's like, here's page one and here's page two. Like that's how most apps are created today. And is that going to make it more difficult? Because my app is every screen is a different page, right? Yes. So that is one of the interesting kind of aspects of designing. And I think when I was talking earlier about, you know, activities versus having your app thinking about fragments, mm. it's kind of the same is true here. If in your Xamarin app, everything is a content page, it, you, you're going to need to refactor some things out because okay. sometimes you're going to want them side by side. And sometimes you're going to want like filling the whole screen. Got it. So um, yeah, if you want to have that option to have the view embedded inside of another content page versus have its own page, you, you probably end up refactoring some of your content pages out into reusable content views. Got it. And, um, it just so happens that we have like a Microsoft learn module that ex specifically explains that for Xamarin. Oh my gosh. So I just linked you and if like folks that are watching want to like just run through this. It's only a couple pages learn module that explains that whole process of taking an existing app in Xamarin forms and migrating it to one that uses two pane view. Okay. So, uh, we could just end the stream now and you can just follow that, but <laughs> all right. So I want to, I want to do some basically, yeah. The answer to your question is you, you might want to make some of your views more reusable by splitting them out into content, content views, and then you can include them here and then you can include them somewhere else. Um, or the other opportunity for you is to think about this page as always being what you show and then encode showing one or the other pane. So this mm. content page now that has these two views can optionally show one or the other of them full screen. So you can actually create, and that's what that training shows you. You can create like a, a list detail kind of view that shows one and shows the other. Got it. When you're a single screen device and shows them side by side when you're not. So the default here seems like it's split 50, 50, right? If I came in here and I yeah. said, um, I guess there's no background color on that, but if I did like background color red, we get, so it's fit. It's basically 50, 50 is what we, I kind of, it's going to default 50, 50. Yeah. Okay. And then if I, if I span it, obviously the dual screen, it's, it's 50, 50, 50, 50. So here, like notice that the P is like hidden there. Yeah. So this is the first step where you would think, oh, should have read the instructions. Yeah. <laughs> because I did something wrong. So what's happening? What's happening here is it's going to do it. It's doing its cross-platform behavior, which is it's always going to default to 50-50 on any platform, on a tablet, on an iPhone, on iOS. Uh, what we haven't done yet is initialize the control with the underlying Android activity in the Android project. Oh, you tricked so, me. You tricked me. Yeah. So, so maybe that should have been step one. Right there when you unpack the IKEA box and picked out the instructions with the Allen key, there was... Uh, there was a bit of documentation somewhere that said, uh, you need to use the SDK. Yeah. You need okay. to go to your Android main activity. Got it. And put it in here. In. So yeah, going just to the Android project. Okay. And yeah, I just paste in that init function. Got it. And so what that does is wire up 
the, the control. So now the control is going to know it's on a dual screen device with a hinge and it's going to still default to moving them next to each other, but it's going to know that the hinge is there and make space for it. Right. So next time you debug, that P is going to be visible because it's not going to have anything accidentally hidden. Ah, uh, got it. Okay. Let me make sure that also there's these activity theme. I think that's by default they have them. So we have, so this is like how the, it basically, so if people don't know what these configuration changes are, you're now probably closer to Android Craig than I am. But from my understanding, of configuration changes basically says, hey, I, my application can handle this type of orientation change. So don't kill yep. my app. Yep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And for all, like pretty much all of the cross platform tools like Xamarin and Unity and Flutter, you want to be handling all of them yourself. You don't yeah. want like your Xamarin app to just reboot. Yeah. effectively when 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 something changes yeah. so we mentioned that for completeness in the docs but your average xamarin forms template yeah, <laughs> the file new is going to include all of those already got it perfect and it did so that was good yeah the newest one is the ui mode because that's a light light mode dark mode i remembered i was updating yeah. a lot of old apps and i was like oh man why is it like crashing oh it's because or not crashing but killing the activity is because of that so yeah okay yeah. i'm ready my body's ready so now okay, i'm gonna so side by side and yeah now it's like correct nice because it because now we actually are hooked into that that sdk under the hood basically yep cool. exactly all right so yeah i'm thinking like okay so now i understand this so this is the key now what if i do rotate it oh i guess i need to oh yeah it's so by default the emulator is not going to support rotation so pull down the yeah the activity thing and enable oh that's not it. Oh, auto rotate. Perfect. Okay. Did I do it? There it goes. Okay, cool. So one pane, two pane, and that's actually kind of nice because you actually might want in in landscape mode, you may actually want to do both panes side by side or make these smaller, right? Yeah. On the tablet. That's more of a tablet view. And here I can still span it and then. Oh, interesting. Then you get one. Got it. It works as you describe. Now, here's the Android's part. What if I rotate it back? Oh, interact. Okay, so it knows. So pane one is always on the top or the left hand side. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, got it. Perfect. But you can you can programmatically change that as well. Pretty much everything in this control is configurable. Okay. So you can change it to be top, like pane two on the top by default, or on the left by default, just with properties in your XAML. Now, how do I make it so pane two is never shown? So if you go back over to the XAML okay. and... Because that's kind of, I could kind of see like a lot of people are like, hey, I have page one, I have page two. I want them to yep. be, you know, full. And then I want to, I want to be able to show it if I tap on it or make pain, basically make pane two visible, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So you can set the, um, I guess there's documentation I could just look at. What might it do? To. <laughs> Cause there's these, okay, here we go. So we have by default, the two pane view will always attempt to render both panes, which means that when an app is running in a single screen, Oh, follower Haas, thank you for the follow. Um, and Vortex, thank you for the sub, uh, Min tall mode height indicates the minimum height of the control must be to enter tall mode. I don't know what tall mode is. Min wide mode width indicates the minimum width the control must be to enter wide mode. And then there's pane one length and pane two length. Yep. Okay. So this is, um, I'm wondering if like you could flick over to my screen. Okay. I'm going to flip you, over to your screen. Here we go. Maybe right? a blow up again. All right, here we go. I'm going to try this. We set this up just ahead of time. I hope oh my gosh, works. it works. Nice. So I'm going to point people like one of the samples that we have. That's my app. Uh, in oh the Xamarin form. Yeah, that was your app. I was playing with it before. So the the pro all the properties that you just read through, like I wrote that documentation and I'm still confused by them a little bit. So this, this sample tries to kind of explain what all of that stuff means, what's going on there. Okay. So. Here we have two panes, left and right, on one screen. So the first thing you'll notice is, like I, I said, you can change the default from top bottom to bottom top or single pane. 
right? Wow. And tall mode, like you said, what's tall mode? Tall mode is the phone, like with the screens one on top of the other. Okay. So it's tall and wide mode is wide. like when it's wide, they're, they're side by side. Okay. So the question you just asked about how could I make um, only show screen one, I can change the wide mode to single pane. Uh, oh no. Hang on. There we go. And I can do the same for tall mode. And then hopefully it'll stay in single pane. Okay. And if I put this, if I span this, it'll see. So now it's still showing pane one. Uh... Right. So it's not even doing something crazy, which you don't necessarily want it to do. But like I said, you can configure everything. So let me go back to top bottom and actually just let me go out and come back in and I top bottom and left, right. So the other thing you can do is set the default to pane two. And when you, when you're saying single pane, now it will show pane two. So these properties, like we're just showing, we're just changing them here in the UI, but you can also set them programmatically, right? Yeah. So you could switch programmatically from pane one to pane two if the user clicked a button or selected something from a list. Got it. Right now right? So I'm navigating like, to a new page, but I would just say, hey, show pane two. And then I would probably say, I guess, is there a way to detect when, if it's in like, uh, like the modes basically? Yeah, you can check all of these values as okay. well. Gotcha. So you can check and you can check using dual screen info. You can check if there's a hinge there. So you can actually know if the phone is on that, oh, okay. if the app is on that phone before you start to play around with these properties. Oh, okay. um, and the other thing you can do, like you said, it's by default 50, 50 side by side, but you can also set this minimums. So if I change them, this screen is 540, like you know that already, right? Mm -hmm. If I make this minimum higher than 540, and let me just make it just over 540. Now that says the, the, the first pane needs to be at least 540 wide. And so that pushes the other one underneath it. Uh, okay. And when I go and rotate, it'll eventually update. Unless it's locked. Unless it's locked, which, oh no, it's not locked. Oh, wow. It's just my computer taking a long time, I think. Uh, anyway, you can make this it's top, it's top, top and bottom. So for example, this is what I was thinking for, for my cadence. Uh, you could have your cadence on the top and the sub, you know, smaller values on the bottom just by setting min wide mode. And then if someone makes this wider, it's going to automatically know to put them side by side. Uh, okay. And not only on a duo, but on a tablet or something larger, it will also know to put them side by side. And on the Surface Duo, it'll be down the middle. And on another tablet, you can set the proportions. So you can make it 30, 70, or 60, 40, or something. So it's pretty configurable, but it's kind of hard to explain all of those from, from like the documentation points you were just reading. Yeah, that makes sense. And then will it, does, how does it know the proportion there, right? Like, can you basically say like, oh, only make the smallest part, if it's in that mode there, as big as it needs to be? Yeah, so you can go into the um, the sizes, and you can use like the the star syntax, you know, like one star and two star. Oh yeah. To set proportional size values. Okay. Um, so here you can see the lengths have been set as percentages in code, um, and you can do it like as percentages in code as well. Okay. So nice. Okay. Um... That's a great set. Um, but you can. Head back to your screen if you want. <laughs> let me see. All right, let me let me pop over here again. Boop. All right, let's see if this works. I'll be really quick with it. me. Uh, it's happening around. Okay, so if I go in and I change, I guess on the two pane view, you do like pane priority. Is that what it's setting? Oh, okay. See, so pane priority, pane one. That should yeah. show. That will only change which one's showing. You also want to set tall mode configuration and wide mode configuration. Got it. Tall, am I in tall mode right now? No, I'm in wide mode. No, I'm in tall mode. It, yeah. 
I mean, depends on whether you want one or two screens. So just set uh, them both to single pane. Got it. Single pane. Yeah. I see. And then there we go. Got it. So we are in wide. The whole thing is in wide mode. And then when I do this, it's still going to be one. Ah, I see. Got it. Yep. So basically, this mode here, you would not be using a two-pane view at all, <laughs> pretty much. You, yeah, yeah. It's like this mode is helpful for adapting for when you're on a single phone, on a phone or a tablet. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you would enable or disable the configuration depending on the device. And then when it's on a foldable, you would leave it as top, bottom, left, right, and let the control take over. Gotcha. So it, yeah, it gives you the ability to force one of the panes to build like a list detail experience, for example, when you're on a single screen. Got it. Left, right, top, bottom. That makes sense. Okay, so then I go here. And now I'm here. Now I got this. I got the top. Top bottom is the tall mode configuration. Yep. And here, because now I'm wide, now I'm in single pane mode for wall. Right. Tall. So tall is like portrait and landscape is like landscape. Yes. Yes. But I think we tried to stay away from those because when it's landscape, it's actually two portrait screens next to each other. And yeah. folks just got confused, including me. Yeah. So. It's it's a little bit tricky uh, tricky terminology that you just kind of get to wrap your head around and play around with it basically. Yeah. Okay. So I can go in here and like the idea would be today to make it so that the this would also be left left right but I see got it. Uh, oh, interesting. Oh, because I would need to set, I would need to set this as the the min width request or something like that, right? Yeah, min tall mode height or tall min wide mode width. Got it. Yeah, so if you set min wide mode width width to five forty one for the Surface Duo, for example, then it'll make sure that they sit one atop the other. And then I could do left, right, basic, or I could do here because we want, oh, I see. This is saying, maybe, is that the min? So I'm doing here? No, minimum. Which, is it the, you want the wide one as well? Min, min wide width. Min, oh. I'm literally setting the wrong things. Okay, I want min. To, okay, I got it. min. There's minimum height request, which is Android right, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Minimum wide mode, 541. Okay, got it. Boom. Yeah. And then here, these are here. Okay, got it. Perfect. This makes sense. Perfect. Okay. And then, then you're saying you, you're like, oh, you can set proportions, basically, right? Yes. On the and yep. that's on the panes. Or on the actual, not on this pane. No, there's pane one length and pane two length in the, oh, on the bottom. Got it. So yeah, you can set that to one star or, you know, 50%, 0.5. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Or yeah, auto obviously is just filling the content. Cause this is, so. okay. Cause this is kind of cool. Cause you have, um, okay. So. Let me let me pull up. Um, I'm gonna this this kind of makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. And what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna boot this up on my on this device here. So a real device because we're gonna use the my cadence as well. So I'm gonna go in. Oh my gosh. Uh, ah. Okay. You can see how much I've used the device so far. Okay. <laughs> I know how to I know how to close things. Maybe. Go ahead. There. Just flick it away. Uh, yeah. and this is it. This is my device. Okay, cool. So I'm going to launch it here. And then what I need to get is a sensor over here. Got it. Perfect. 
I love testing my cadence because I just have to like actually grab a sensor and I could set default values, but I'm like, I'm going to do it live because I'm weird. Um, anyways, I wanted to see this on the device and get it here. Cool. I don't know. My resolution's a little low. I bet it doesn't have me logged into pro mode for some reason. No, it should be. Let me see. Where's my oh, visor? Yeah. Visor always logs me out of, <laughs> I need to find my code somewhere and something. Uh, That's not what I wanted it to do. Perfect. All right, cool. Yeah, it's a little blurry on the stream, but it's readable. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I got pain two, pain one. It's in dark mode right now, which is kind of funny. So let me just, well, my app works in, 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 in that mode. That's good. Okay, so this works. So this is cool because actually, if you look at my cadence, let me do this. I'm going to now open up my cadence, which I should have in my, where's it at? Oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to close this. We're just going to mess around a little bit with it. I think Craig's already optimized the entire app. Every time like the team puts out a sample, then you like optimize it. Didn't you optimize like the weather app or whatever? Yeah, I started on the weather app. I was doing the calculator one before that, um, oh, yeah. but I, I do have to get back to the weather app actually. All right. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I actually just, just updated main. Let me pull down stuff just so we have it. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with my my new update. I gotta say, let me see if I got any sales. Probably not. Uh, no. It's always funny because I'll get the the. Oh, do you wanna you know log in or whatever? And then I get the thing on my phone, and I'm like, no. And it's like, do you want to change your password? No, I don't want to change. Your password. <laughs> Didn't actually request anything. Okay. Uh, no, no, no sales. Did all that work? No sales. Perfect. Uh, okay, cool. So, perfect my cadence okay because let me show you what this looks like so well one this this is pretty clear over here is that i have a where's my zoom in at zoom it perfect i have a like ride history page and a ride details page like that's pretty straightforward and then i have this cadence page and like that's pretty um pretty bananas it's like the logic is really fragmented um mm -hmm. oh this is, I, I had ios as the startup no wonder all right let's let's just see what i just want to launch it and see what happens okay and we're going to first thing i need to do is i need to go into settings i need to turn it so the screen stays on okay and then display and turn off after 30 seconds 30 minutes perfect yeah that's First change I made. Yeah. Go away. There we go. Cool. Oh, that's a new. That's a new news. Uh, cool. All right. So it's launch. It's gonna. I just pulled it down, so it didn't have anything in there. But if we look at the cadence page, it is a. It is. A, it's actually really not that complicated. It's a. It's a grid, and it's got some image buttons, a label in the middle, a big label in the center, and on the bottom there's three labels. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, st a stack layout of like stuff, basically. So there's like some buttons. It's actually really not that much. There's not a lot happening in here, to be honest with you. So yeah, it's I mean, it's 140 lines. It's a it's a one number. I was joking with Frank. I was like, I'm really good at putting a big number on the screen. That's like that's the type of app developer I am is like I can put a number on the screen. Yeah. Um, that's about it. This has Bluetooth, right? Yes. It's okay. Yeah, it's all you've got to get the service buds to like oh, okay. get the full experience. Can I buy those in the e-company e shop? Get a discount. Yes, you can. All right. So, all right. Boom. My cadence. Look at that app icon. Beautiful. It's an emoji. Pedal, pedal. Pedal, pedal. All right. Cool. So I go in here. I hit configure. So if we look at here, I'm assuming the first thing. So I do this, people can't see it, but <laughs> it's funny because people can't see it there, but if you could see it on my screen, it, it's cut off in mm -hmm. the middle. So you got to pretend that it's cut off in the middle and that's great. Um, I wish that this, but you can see, imagine you can see this gap right here on the bottom. That's, that's where the gap is. Basically. Yeah. Where the, yeah. the hinge is. So people won't use that, but that's okay. And then we can see if your app is responsive because 
it see how it kept it so that's how you know because it would kill my app right if, if it didn't wasn't configured correctly yes all right so I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, restart yeah i get that permissions spinning I'm gonna spin it up come on you need a wheel some sort of wheel to i know i need frank to no the, of course i'm assuming that this sensor is still working and the battery's not dead very <laughs> possible uh, well, it doesn't seem to be where I have another one. Hold on. Uh, where's the Garmin at? Uh, Wait. Oh, there it is. It's there. It happened. All right, cool. This is a this is a very not great sensor. This one. This one's like a cheap. They're all cheap, but this one's really cheap. Um, it's okay, connected. Cool. It happened. Uh, all right. So now when I launch this thing, all right. Let me do it. Oh my god. There's a number, okay? And then I scan, I spin, there we go. All right, what you, actually, this isn't too bad because the, it does say 92 in the middle, uh, but you can't even see the stop button. That's so great, okay. <laughs> so not ideal is what we're, we're seeing here, right? Is like yeah. not an ideal scenario. Um, okay, but what we're saying is like, if I go in to here the difference is i have these modes right so this is the this is the real winner if i do this uh we'll continue okay cool. so it's going to connect and then now we get a bunch of numbers at the bottom see how small they are they're tiny mm -hmm. they're the smallest and that's why i also have the ability to make them bigger so i have this screen and then people can bump up the wow look at that um, I know. So that's cool. And then now look how much bigger they are. And then I can continue the session. Oh, I think I started a new session. Oh my gosh. So I can like go, look at it go. It's happening. Perfect. Awesome. This isn't centered. So that really bothers me, but that's okay. Then I can hit stop and go to history. Wow. This is a great app. Look at this. Whoa. Amazing. Animation. Well, I know it's built in. I mean, we did, we built that live here on the stream, which is amazing. Okay, so this seems like a good candidate for the thing, right? Like, does it seem that you need to basically use two pane view everywhere, kind of? Then, uh, I don't think so. Like, there's certainly cases where you can just span it and kind of ignore the hinge. Um, you know, there's some content like a map, for example. Like, if you're in a maps app you kind of don't really care because the custom you can span and zoom and pinch anyway so if the content is able to be moved mm. by the user you generally probably don't need to to worry too much about that because they can take control of their own destiny and adjust their their viewpoint anyway like that's generally what's happening even with the small screen you know they have to pan and zoom around so there are situations where you just kind of provide the content and and let people navigate it themselves but if you're producing like this screen, for example, yeah, you definitely want to move them. So there's some on the left and some on the right. So that's what this one is kind of an example where I thought that two pane view layout that you've got running would be good. So the top chunk of the screen by default is the big number. Yeah. And the other three can stay on the bottom, but when you're spanning it, the other three just move over to the other screen. Okay. Let's try that out. Let's try that out first. So let's do. Uh, I'm going to do uh, install the new so bit. You should just be able to wrap like those controls, right? In it. Can you yeah. make turn that into two grids and then put the two pane view around it? So yeah, just uh, add seriously. the two control like you were going to. Yeah. Add new okay. So let's try that out. I'm going to do manage new gets here. I mean, famous last words, but you know, it should work. And then let's see what let's see what version of Xamarin Forms I have installed. I think I have the latest. I'm I'm like ninety nine percent sure. You just updated it like two weeks ago, right? It's definitely it's definitely not the latest. Look at that. So that's okay. I'm on two two twelve. So I did update it, but I didn't update it to that one for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, but let's just. But we can just go back in time because these versions align, and mm -hmm. then we're good to go. Okay. And then I need to go, I need to in it, right? In it, in it. Yep. Use the yep. tools. Yep, this. Copy. I feel as though, Craig, 
that it should just tell me to do that right here too. Yeah, I thought that too as we were looking at the page. So I've mental noted that for myself to okay. Perfect. fix that one up. Okay. Did it. We go into Xam, Android app, and then let's go into the main activity. Perfect. Paste it in there. Done. Easy enough. Okay. So what we want to do is, yes, we want to go in and then grab just this code for now. I'm just going to paste it up here. But I see what you're saying. Oh, I see what you're saying is like, hey, um, oh, I could just copy and paste this grid and then remove stuff, right? Yeah, just put it in pane one and then. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. And then remove stuff, optimize it, bingo, bango. Got yep. it. OK, so we're going to take this, copy. Go here, paste it, bring in this puppy. Boop. One day it'll bring it into the, not the end, but I think it's a little <laughs> limitation of. Not this day. Yeah, not this day. Okay, cool. So we have that. And then we have, oh, that's cool. Okay, got it. So we have grid. So we're going to take this grid, paste it in here. Mm -hmm. And then. We're going to format the XAML. And then we're also going to take it and shove it in this other one. But we're going to remove a bunch of stuff, basically. So in this top one, what would be nice is that we can basically leave the settings and the name and the stuff like that up top. I think that's fine. But what we want to do is get rid of the bottom row, bottom two rows. Well, do you want to, isn't the button on the bottom row? Do you want to leave the button on that screen and just get rid of the row above that? So today, it's a valid question. We can move it back time. anyway. So you think the start stop button, you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was. But then the stats would be under it, but that'd be okay too, I guess. Hmm, good point. Um, move it across. You can tweak it later. Yeah, because I guess if they moved it back over to one screen, it would just move it correctly. But yeah, we, we could try it. So let's just... Yeah, as you get into like tweaking the views, you might actually use the state of the page to show and hide. Like you might have two buttons, so it's always at the bottom. Ah. So, um, that's the rabbit hole that you end up in like super enhanced Got it. for the two screens. Got it. Okay, cool. So then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this is auto auto really. We have auto. I think there's still I don't know how I did this. I did it terrible. Like this is just this is I I keep tweaking it. But like okay, so yeah. Um Yeah, this one does column. Okay, it says it's column 1 auto auto fill. Okay, that's fine. So we have rotations. We have this. In an ideal world, what I would do is I would probably actually figure out how to, I'd put these into a, if I was doing it right, I'd put these into a stack layout and then I would change it based on if it's in this mode, put them, stack them this way, else horizontal. Yeah, vertical, horizontal. Yeah. yeah. That's if I was doing it right, but I'm not. So, so we need to get rid of a few rows here. So this would be row, easy, zero, zero, zero. And then one, boom. And now if I just run this, it's going to look completely incorrect still. <laughs> Probably. Because I haven't changed any of the defaults of the two pane view stuff. Right. It'll be side, side by side, side until you bring over that um, perfect min width yes. thing. Yes. From and we're going to, did it, oh, it didn't launch already. Okay. This is the old one. Boom. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. There we go. Get out of nice. here. So everyone's very silently following along, which is great. So <laughs> yeah, questions have dried up. Yeah, if there are any questions, let us know. Also, we're just we're now we're now we're, now we're in the code session because I think the first half was like understanding like what is in there. Do I need to install TikTok? I just installed this. TikTok. I like this. You can group these apps together. I would group my cadence and YouTube together. That's probably what I would do. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. That's what I do on my on my iPad outside. And I, I have it one, 
like one, th three, four, or two thirds and one third basically on the iPad. But like if I was on this, some people might, they, a lot of people cycle and they have the screen, the TV in front of them. So if they did mm -hmm. have a duo, I'm thinking like if you did have a duo or a, du or a lap or something else, you could get this better enhanced view because you don't need even a bigger number on your screen because you have a tablet. You actually just need the other things to be bigger. And that, that's, that was some of the main feedback that I got from people is that they wanted um, bigger. They just wanted the, a lot of the numbers and the things to be bigger in general. So, um, okay, it's doing stuff. It's found the device. Okay, that's good. Con. Yeah. That was real slick. While this is going, I just play some music. There we go. Craig can't hear the music, but I can. <laughs> and you can. Okay, there we go. Okay. So we have the app. All right, so let's just... Okay, so now we're in... <laughs> that's great. Okay, so now we're in this great split screen view, which funny enough, okay, so let's stop, is one that looks terrible. But if I span it, it's actually like, now it's a little, it's it's not good, it's not what we wanted, but it's getting closer to what we want. It's more readable, at least. There's nothing stuck behind the hinge. Correct, so. yes. Okay, cool. So what we'd wanna do now though, is we wanna go back to the single, Boom. And then we want to use the power of the hot reloads. And we mm. want to go here and say, uh, what are we doing again? We're doing min, no. Yeah, min uh, wide mode width, I think. Equals 541, say. Okay, so then we have wide mode. I'm just, I'm just putting, you can see my computer, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. 541 and magical number, that's just the duo. It's the duo, yeah, screen okay. um, in DP. There are not many phones that are that wide. Like the duo is pretty squat mm. in terms of its aspect ratio. Um, so yeah, the my, my mileage may vary for what is a good number for that. Okay. All right, so, so far I have this. Oh, and it's because I didn't do, I need to oh, do. You want, the, you want pain one height and pain two height, yeah. Pain one length. Length, yes, my bad. Pain two, pain two length, auto, save. Now, I love hot reload. Did that, did that work? Oh, it did, Whoa. boom, look at that. It's pretty close to your old UA, UI. Yeah, now that's pretty cool because now if I do this, we're getting closer, basically. What yeah. we'd want to do is probably, it's an internet interesting conundrum. Yeah, you want that to be on the bottom, I guess, or maybe centered, I don't know. Yeah, what you, yeah, you'd probably, yeah, I think you'd want to do here easily enough. How do I make this sticky on top? That's what I really want to do, come here. Uh, settings, and I want to do always on top, perfect, thank you. Does that work? And then what I want to do is I want to do uh, probably vertical option center, the whole thing. And then now Ooh. that's there. That's. Or better yet, or better yet, what we'd actually want to do is not adjust that. We probably want to say vertical option center. And then center, center. This would be let's fill, uh, fill and expand. Maybe like end and end. I don't know. How, I don't know how does this work. Background color. There yeah, I was gonna say, are they still in the grid? Like the grid is only up the top there, right? Yeah, so I probably need to say, like, hey, fill the whole thing. Maybe not. Oh, I bet I need to do this, which is center and expand. Ah, oh, that expand thing. 
Maybe, maybe not. Oh, oh, I know what I need to do. This. Okay. Oh, there we go. So it's not even nice. that. That that makes that makes more sense. Yeah. There. Yeah. In an ideal world, if we were doing this correct, I would do. We would do this if we do it right. We're just now we're just now we're just coding. Now, Craig, we're coding together. We would actually have two stack layouts, and we would use. Um, we just use the default and what we'd actually do is we'd only have uh, we'd have zero column de definitions and then we would have the row and then we'd have i don't even think i need that yeah and this would be so this would be start that's correct and this would be oh yeah see then this would be vertical options center horizontal options fill and expand just it's probably the default but then we don't need the vertical options because th this thing is going to be in there and then same thing here code and code and coding and uh almost <laughs> um that's almost correct um oh i think i did There are, is there, there is no three columns, only one column. Okay. Oh wait, they're okay. inside the stack layout now though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it could be that these are being, now it could be though, let's say yes, continue. It could be that because I deleted them and re-added them, it, maybe they're not showing up. No. Interesting. Okay, let me reboot it maybe. <laughs> um grid oh i'm no that's correct this should be correct there's two rows this is the top row okay let's try it again it may have been because like i removed it and then added it again maybe because you know i'm updating these via names in the code behind instead of data binding because yeah james uh because <laughs> i finished this app people in one week you can read about it on my blog um Craig, you can look at the code and you can be like, wow, that's gross code. And it is. <laughs> so. Okay, cool. Let's right, see if this works. Also, this is how I did, did test it, by the way, when I was using my iPhone was sitting here with this stupid thing. All right, cool. So now it's going, hey, something's happening. All right. That, that, <laughs> that's great. Uh, let's fix this because now they're showing up. Um, okay, so horizontal start, center, end. Right. And then. The stack layout is. Oh. Very cool. oh. The stack layout orientation is vertical, right? Yes. Yes. You're a genius. You want... Yeah, that's smart. Yes. And then you want and fill. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Dang. I'm good at that XAML, yo. Um, okay, cool. Now let's see what happens. I'm very scared. Boop. Hey! Whoa. Amazing. Wow. Now here's here's what's amazing about this so far is that if I was just to de deploy this today every user would have the same exact experience. You know what I mean? Like if they're on a single screen display, but my dual screen users would already have a little bit better of an experience because yeah. they could adjust this. Now the, the key is to stack these correct when in this mode, because what I'd want to do is I'd want to say vertical and then what I would want them to actually be is center, 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 center. Yeah. Like this. Pretty much. And then what yeah. I should actually do is make it. Oh, I didn't, didn't have my screen on the screen, but I have a way of this is uh, it's almost at max. 
I should probably make this so, so they can make it even bigger. Dang it, I just rolled out this update. <laughs> um, oh, that's way too small. So let's say it's just mega. But even still, oh, what's going on here? Okay, okay cool. So that's cool. This will adjust it. Ooh, I know what I could do is I could make it so if it is in this mode, increase the fonts even a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yep. Which is kind of cool. So this is kind of cool. And you're right. I could put this over here and let's get rid of that red. And let's go back to where we're at. Because right now we're at this. Like this. And then this would be X colon name. Oh, I forgot I got rid of this. Center and expand. Perfect. So this will be um, pro metrics uh, stack. And the cool part is if they're not in pro, I could say upgrade to pro to get metrics here. You know what I mean? Like, because yep. these wouldn't show up at all. And I could actually program at pro programmatically put that in there too. Um, but we'll just, you know, we'll just imagine if they don't have pro the, just the start and stop button are on like one side, which is great. Um, okay, cool. So now the question is Craig, how do I, how do I, how do I detect these changes? How do I do this? So I just linked you another link that's going to like blow your mind again. Copy link. But the dual screen, the two pane view, uh, also supports triggers on visual states. Oh my god! So goodness. you can actually set up a trigger for, uh, when it's spanned from single pane to two pane. And so you can set your properties right there. Whoa. All right. I've never so used triggers it. before, so I'm, I'm ready to learn triggers. <laughs> Wait, I thought you were going to teach me how to use triggers. I don't know how to use triggers. Um, the so state managers can... and triggers always confuse me. Oh, there's a spanning. That's what I would want, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you want the, um, cause you're not actually changing the span mode or the tall or the wide mode. You're actually only interested if the thing is on one screen or two screens, right? Uh -huh. So, um, you can set that span mode and uh -huh. change those. Or alternatively, you know, you, there is an event, a layout changed event. So you could go into the code behind and do the two pane view dot layout changed and listen for that and just manually check the mode mm. and switch like, you know, all of the properties that you want, okay. which if there's a lot of them might actually be neater than trying to use the triggers. So that's true. But I, I have, I have, there's these um, group, I, I, I know that there's this thing, it's called like grouped triggers though. Um, uh, there's a, it's a new thing, uh, a newer thing. How do I search? There's a search button triggers. Um, oh, that's, that is not helpful at all. It searches all of them. Um, there's not that many blog posts. Let's just go back forever. So there was, there was a thing that came out in, no, I'm going to search the docs. The docs will be better. Let's open this again because there's triggers and there was a new thing called multi triggers, right? No. It rings a bell. Is that what I want? Yes. See, look at this. It says when multi trigger, is that what I want? No, that's not what I want. No, it's like, um, maybe that's not what I want. Data triggers, property triggers. Is this thing a trigger? It's a visual state. No, I want visual state, visual state. Yeah, I don't, somebody help me in the chat. Uh, <laughs> state visual state manager. Um, no, there's a thing. Here we go. Set state on multiple elements. So what you can do is you can say, Ooh. yeah, see visual group, common states, normal, 
press, and then you say, see, you're saying visual setters, scale and this thing to eight, and then on those other ones, set these values. So this is what I think what we would want mm. is, can you combine these two? Visual state group, wow. visual state. I know, I know. Um, th this is like, it's sad because I'm just like, I don't know how any of this stuff works. Um, and the only person that does is like Javier, so. But this one is like, yeah, this is saying like, oh, normal do this. But I think what we want is like, there's not spanned and then spanned and tall. So I think it would be like, something like this. And I think it would be like, here, let me, let me open this up again. Cause this would be really cool for if this did work, there's not span, spanned and tall, not span, spanned, tall. Oh, I don't know. I might have to do it this way. I don't know. Uh, and maybe this doesn't work Just with triggers. I don't know how to code. This is beyond me, Craig. I'm now I'm just confused. Ah. Hmm. We need to do, we should have done live share and we could have like been like typing into the same. I could, I could give it to you. I have the button. Here we go. I'm sharing people, it's happening. But because that, that would be the ideal scenario, else we'd have to adjust all of these, you know what I mean? But let me let me do this yeah you just want what do you actually want to change though because yeah you just want to do setter you just want to do property setters for those don't you just oh you want the stack layout to go from vertical to horizontal orientation yeah and you want to the alignment to be centered 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 or left center right yeah or so, start center end. yeah so i think what we would do yeah is we would come in and we would say, all right, well, if it's not spanned, because this is the trigger for this, and then it's saying yeah. on orientation. And then, the and then do we want tall to be that way too, or no? Probably, because tall is just like portrait, but taller. Okay, and then we would want, let's just see if this works. So we just have this in there. Yeah. And then you can link the background color ones in too, and we can watch. Oh yeah, that's probably smarter actually. Okay, I'll just do this because you can do multiple because you're setting multiple things. Yeah. My question is, I think that sometimes like this stuff, like does this break the hot reload? No. Mm, I don't know. Hot reload's generally pretty good for me. Let's see, horizontal. So I go here. Let's see if it works. Mm. Mm, it's not doing. May not have. Do I need to trigger these? Do I need to set these? No, the triggers are doing them. Hey, hack, how's it going? Thanks for the follow. All right, let me let me reboot it. Let me reboot it. Let's just see. Did you get the live share to work? Oh wait, I, I sent didn't you a see the link share. come up. Sent you one. Yeah, I see it. See if it works. See if it works. Opening. We shall see. We shall see. Oh, I get a little bit of feedback. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, so now we're here. Okay, so it actually did set the back. Oh, that's kind of cool because now it did set the background color, and now it's green. So that's kind of cool, actually. Yep. That 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 that. So now it is. I think that the hot reload had like a problem with that. Right. So it is doing it. It is doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Here we go. 
Okay, cool. I'm going to stop. And then do this. <laughs> ah, wow, cool. Okay. All right. Mostly working. You just yeah. need to figure out that orientation there. Yeah, because I think what I would want to be able to do is, can I set a visual state setter on another another one? You know what I mean? Like that's that's the that's what I would kind of want to do is like, can I do this? I think I can, by the way, is I think I can come in here and now say it wouldn't be on the entry, but it would be on. Let me just let me just minimize a few things here. So what we would do is we would say get rid of this here. OK, cool. Oh, this is not, I put it on the bottom. Interesting. So what I could say is on label rotations, label time, label average, which is this would be label dot uh, uh, horizontal options. Center and expand like this. And what we'd want to do is we'd want to say if this is in not spanned, we would want to leave it in label time, label average. We should actually make this. Yeah, so this would be start and like this. And ideally, in the other modes, which we need to test, which would be spanned and tall. Is tall mode where it's on the think, top and the bottom or no? Yeah, maybe tall you want to leave. Leave alone, the default? Yeah, like you want it to be across the bottom. Yeah. So not, know, not spanned. We and, we're going to have to rotate the device, I think. Yeah, check it out. But yeah. And this one, yeah, we want to say, oh, I think that's what we have. Yeah, we do. We, we, we do. And yes. you, and the, yeah, you've already changed the orientation to vertical. Well, this one's vertical for the span. Yeah. Yeah. And for tall, that would be okay too. I think. Um, yeah. I think it's, I don't know actually what the best is for that. Okay. Maybe let's do it and see. Yeah. Right, let me re let me reload this here. Ba, 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 ba. Do I Zwift? Bill asks. I do not Zwift. No, I have an indoor. Let me find you my blog. I have an indoor spin bike. Um, just having four hundred dollars. I have a. I, I I do spin classes, so I'm more of a spin class person myself. So I have a sunny bike and a doge um here that has like sensors on it and it looks like this and um this is where i put my my cadence app or peloton app or apple fitness plus apple fitness plus doesn't read back the the cadence sensor at all but you know um the other ones do so ooh because element is not in the name scope so maybe i can't do what i just wanted to do um which one i think it broke on this thing it should have done it interesting i was hoping that it would and maybe the thing that i just wanted to do didn't work then i was hoping i could do this because i can do target name oh you know what i bet if i do this and i move it up to the, oh, you think it's the grid? Oh, uh, right. If I move it here, and then what I would need to do is I would need to give these names. Where I would say, or this one would need a name X colon name. We do have a lot of friends. My our Pierce, he uh, he also Zwifts as well, and other people Zwift. I don't know. I, I ride I ride outside for fun and ride inside for exercise and outside for exercise. But I'm not a competitive cyclist at all so i'm not a swifter I, I like the actual spin and the music and all the stuff so i'll say uh stats stack panel and this we would then say target type target name this target name 
this. And this, oh, no, that's correct. Label dot horse, and then I, get, I think I gotta do stack panel dot maybe. I don't, I don't actually know like how deep you need to go on those, but hard to say. Cause this would be nice, right? Because you could be like put it on the whole page or something like that for, for your entire app. Right. Otherwise, yeah, you're embedding lots of them oh, under a lot of things you want to. I think that was the idea. Let's run it again. Because if I run, if I read this, it says set state on multiple. In the previous examples, visual states were attached to and operate on single elements. However, it's also possible to create visual states that are attached to a single element, but the set properties on other elements within the same scope. This avoids right. having to repeat visual states on the same element the states operate on. The question is, what is the scope? Yeah, I'm assuming it's like you said, the grid and its children. Yeah, this is weird though, because it's like the button and then the button is setting the entry, which is above it. It's kind of weird. Hmm. Although, did this run? Did it crash? Oh, stack panel. Ooh, interesting. Oh, huh. stack layout. <laughs> Oh Wrong. my, oh my, oopsie poops. Uh, okay, cool. Whoops. That's hilarious. Did you get the live show to work? Did it work? Oh, you're here, it's, Craig Dunn. I'm just, just starting to, oh so gosh. I'm waiting. It's happening. It's happening. If this works, this is amazing. Okay, so we got, let's see if it starts. And we can wrap this up. It's Friday. Got weekend plans. Probably running. Yes, running. And I just picked like another three kilograms of tomatoes. So I'm going to have to figure out something to do with those. Oh, nice. Mm. Send them up here. Um, I would love, I just. Smuggling across the border. I think you just got to make more and more, um, you know, cheese, cheese and tomato plates. Yeah, that has happened a lot. All right, this did not work. The element is not in the name scope. Why is it in the name scope? Hmm, interesting. Okay. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. I wonder if. I wonder Which if. Which one is failing? Well, it's hard. Oh, I got to do it again. But I'm curious. Maybe I need to put it in like. I don't know. Let me look at the sample one more time. This is a visual state manager. It's inside the button. I wonder if I can put it like, can I put it like inside of this label? You know what I mean? Cause I guess I did it. I had it inside. of. I don't know. I'm trying to get it to debug on it's building. Let's see. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know what, cause I thought that like the idea was like, you could put it on the whole page. Cause that would be kind of cool. It was like set it at the page level and then go from there. We'll see where this throws an exception though. That's cool. Boom, right there. Nope, it still didn't work. It, it doesn't say, um, let me see, view details. Uh, find by name, but which one? <laughs> Uh, let's see, exception, exception, this element. I can tell me what element. Maybe you put the manager on page and groups in layout scope. Mm, that's a good question. Find by name, it doesn't say what the name is. Sometimes if I just let it crash, it'll <laughs> do it. Uh, I'm assuming Dave Rich wrote this. Okay, so this says, if I can find it. All right, here it is. The element is not in the name scope. Uh, doesn't say what element. No clue, just guessing. <laughs> yeah, uh, good question. All right, so let's try one other thing. It's weird though, because it's like it definitely is, right? 
label rotations, label average. Oh, I wonder if it like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just put it on the whole screen, the whole page. The whole page can have a visual state, no? I don't know, let's try it. Yep. Hmm. This should work, this should do it, I would think. Cause you should be able to have like visual states on the entire page and then you could change the background color of the page or something like that. Yeah. In an ideal world. Yes, like just using the regular set of property syntax. So the target name now just needs to be able to find. To find it. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, that definitely worked. Oh, cool. So that that actually is a better example to put into the dual screen sample. Um, yes. We're learning, we're doing stuff. Okay, we're rotating. We're rotating. <laughs> All right. Did you get it? Look at that. Perfect. Stop. Yeah, cool. All right, moment of truth. Whoa. Whoa. Wow, nice. That's great. I think that's like no code. And then the the question will be no code. Yes. The question is I'm gonna rotate the device. Almost. That didn't work out we wanted yet. Okay. Oh wait, what's the, so that's the yellow. Wait, that's, where is the That's the yellow. Oh, but they're there, right? They're just like so you want them stacked on this view as well, you're saying. I think so, yeah, right. You'd want okay. that's the tall mode. So you definitely want yeah. that. Yeah, my bad. I was thinking it would still make sense, but that would be the wide mode and the I yeah, it's and I think here I think it, see it doesn't know how to do it. You gotta reboot the triggers. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna keep it in this mode. Cause then what we want to make sure is that if we bring it up to the the question now will be what does it look like in landscape mode? Well, it's in theory, it'll be side by side still. Hmm. Cause we, we definitely do we want that? It might look okay. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, it's gonna yeah, tell us here in a second. We're about to find out. Oh, after you spin. Interesting. Yes, that's definitely not what I want. I don't think. So okay, let's see. Yeah, because now it's red, which means it's going to put it in this mode. <laughs> yeah, that's not correct. So, okay. Right. So, because it's single pane, but it's, yes. yeah. So, we would want, do we want to change this then somehow? Hmm. Because we want to say, like, if in wide mode. Well, you could use the same triggers to do something with the lengths, maybe. Because it's, hmm, interesting. But yeah, the trigger is single pane. Trigger is single single pane. Because that's why it's like, you know, horizontal in the red. So you know which trigger is getting triggered. That's true. Definitely, it's this one. But it also is this way. And this one is correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. So we need to target that specific landscape single screen view. So this looks good. In this mode. This looks yep. good in this mode. Then we need to say and in the yellow mode. And also, I think you copied and pasted the green over the yellow. I did. That is correct. Yeah. So, but that still looks good. Yeah. I think so because I think it just lines it up easily because you're probably going to like have it folded in like a book or not like a book mode, but some other mode. So, now the only yeah. thing we need to really do is figure out how to move this up here and then make this not split. This is the last mode. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because it's not spanned. 
See? Correct. Um, single pane. And this is saying to set it that way, but I think it comes down to this, right? Or no? Oh, it's, no. So it's, yeah, the two lengths are being set by star and auto. Yeah. But here, what we really want is we want this to be, um, I don't know, actually, because if I was to set this back to, now we're in wide mode, right? Left, right? If we set it to single pane, it's going to not show those. Yeah. So what we'd want is Hmm. Oh. I wonder, is there, is there different span modes? Single yeah. pane. Okay, there's just the three modes. So there's yeah. the three modes. Yeah. But I see what you're saying is you're saying like there should be a way to say. Uh, yeah, within this, how can we keep the portrait behavior, but tweak this one? Yeah. Hmm. That's the only question. Because everything else is looking great. This is like the last conundrum, basically. Hmm. Because here... <laughs> yeah, that's what's forcing... That's what's letting it show... Actually, if you set that to 760... Oh wait, what's that? Cuz this oh, would, yeah, this definitely. wouldn't be this wouldn't be so bad if we could make this, you know what I mean? Like do you know what I mean? Like what would be nice is if I could set the pain length to and then make this stack the other way. Right. Like in this mode change it so it's 50 50 which would be cool because this would really optimize it for tablets as well if you're in pro mode at least yep if you're not in pro mode you're gonna be like what the heck is going on <laughs> so but this might be the situation where the situation might be craig which is like you actually have a single pane for this mode and this mode, and then you actually light it up for the other mode. Yeah. Could be. Because you're saying, what did you want me to set stuff to? 600? Uh, I was trying to figure out what if there would be a value that would make sense there, but I'm not sure it does. Because you want them to be on top of the other in the other in portrait. So you, yes. you kind of need that setting to trigger that behavior. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think of a way that we can we can do all this in XAML without having to resort to <laughs> like some sort of layout changed handler that checks the orientation and does something different for portrait and landscape, yeah. which would be something you could do but someone's saying bill is saying wasn't it wasn't it vertical instead of tall um in the tall mode which is this it is oh no this isn't tall mode tall mode is this and spanned. This is tall because that's tall, right? So that's green. And then wide, spanned. And so this is kind of weird because this is like 
these just have names on the visual state. It doesn't actually mean anything. Yeah, um, yeah. But this is just saying when this thing goes into tall mode, then do this. When it goes into wide mode, but what also is happening is it's saying that wide mode is also this, basically. Um, Wait, is it? Because isn't wide mode red? I mean green. Oh, yeah, you're right. Like it's doing the it's doing the not this is the not spanned visual state. Oh which yeah. Is, yeah, that's right. It's that one. So it's happen it's using that state for both portrait and landscape on single screen. Yes. Correct. And that's the problem. It's using the same one for both orientations. So you need either another visual state group that's tracking orientation or some other way of detecting this state for single screen. Yeah. yeah, that's what Aiden was saying. Could you use a multi-trigger with an orientation trigger? Too? Uh, right. Uh, probably. Triggers. Adaptive trigger. Landscape. Use it for landscape or portrait mode. Well, that's actually not too bad. So this is saying on this, how does, how does it know if it's portrait or landscape? Size, there's like a size changed thing that we would need to set basically yeah. on it. And we do it on the page. So what you'd want to do is, I see. Orientation states, and you would have landscape portrait. Interesting. So you really need to do. Because you'd have another state that you trigger that puts it into landscape mode. The question is. We oh, also could think you... it's landscape mode in that regard too. Interesting. Yeah, could you have two single pane states? Mm. Yes. One that's orient one's orientation landscape and one's orientation portrait. Yeah, and in that regard, what you'd want to do is. Well, I don't know. Well, I think you just make that red, put them vertical the same as they are. Yeah. And it's probably good enough. Yeah. And put the width back to star and auto so that you get the right behavior on the vertical. Correct. Um, yeah. Like this, it needs to be star, star, and then it needs to be auto, auto or whatever. Yeah. That makes sense. Cause this doesn't make sense here, but it does make sense. Yeah, but Wait. if those was vertical, if that was vertical and start center end, yeah, it might be fine. So you just need to add that orientation trigger and have those have two states for single pane, single uh, pane, oh, single pane portrait, single pane landscape. I see what you're saying. Doing the multi trigger that Aiden suggested. So you would do. A visual state of this. And then here, would you do a. Oh, he's got documentation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Orientation state trigger. Oh my gosh. Oh, there is one. Oh, That's there is one. Uh, oops. Oh gosh. So yeah, where's the format for the multi-trigger? Oh yeah, I think you just put multiple triggers in here. So here you would do a orientation state trigger. Look at that. Wow, it literally is just there. There's like a state, there's an orientation, there's a mode. What is the thing? Ah! What is it? Orientation. Okay. Because I think it's just... Mo What 
What is it? I don't see it. Try hmm, states. <laughs> yeah, is that what I thought? No. Okay, so let me. Let me maybe wow, what there. a complete. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna do. Let me just Google this. Uh, let's see if this is in here. Orientation state trigger. Oh, orientation portrait. Orientation landscape. I don't know why it's not coming up though. Interesting. Uh, so, what it would do is, I'm so confused on how this will work. So you would like clone, you get rid of this. Yeah, I get rid of that. You do and add portrait finished. and yes. landscape. And then this would be orientate. I don't know why it's not working, right? Oh, okay. Interesting, landscape. Okay, the autocomplete comes up, but then this other one doesn't, okay, cool. So you do this here, portrait. Okay, so then what we would do is we would do the green. Oh, it's mad at me. Visual seems must be unique. It is unique. Uh, they are unique. Take this here, and then you. I guess you. Oh, we also need to do the. Let's just see. If this, let's see if this recompiles or not. Mm -hmm. I think. Actually, I didn't know that these orientation states work. It's funny enough because I I've always wanted to do the left right, and I was gonna change the grid and all the other stuff to make it work, but the two pane view seems to make it work better. And the question is, is this gonna work how I think it's gonna work, which is like it's basically saying like, hey, if this is in single pane and landscape and single pane portrait, then do this. Yeah, honestly, don't know, but we're about to yeah. find out. Yeah, I was gonna throw an exception. No, I did it, okay. So let's start it. <laughs> Wave your arm. Wave your arm. Okay, there, perfect. And stop, perfect. All right, so this spanned, that works. Oh no, it didn't work. Oh no. It went back to the other one. Maybe I need to put. What about vertical? Yeah, let's see. There's this. Nope. So that, that mode worked. Am I doing it wrong? orientations and setting up stuff bill are always the fine tuning and optimization is already a pain yeah are always a pain basically oh did i mess something up no uh, auto okay that's correct according to the post you have to enable multi-triggers in the multi-triggers oh, okay i didn't read the documentation okay so let me read the multi-triggers um what Multi-triggers. Multi-trigger conditions. Man, triggers, okay. Event triggers. Hmm. Control to declare your control. Oh, so it's only it's only doing the first trigger still, so it's only checking window span mode state. Yeah. Binding condition. I see. It's on. It's on a target type. Oh, this is setting up. Yeah. We don't need that because we already have the state. Yeah, we already have the state. Well, that's the funny thing, too, is 
there's state tra there's state triggers. But the question is, is it that accurate that they're both Maybe I need to flip them around. Say so check those first. Check the or the portrait first. I don't know. It can't be right. I gotta ask the, the Xamarin Forms team basically. Is what it's like. How does this work? But it it should work because this is the trigger, and then it should check both of them. I would think that like, hey, when either of these occur, check both states to see if they're accurate or not. Or is it like when either of these occur, then do this? I, think, I would expect that to be true. I think that's what it is. So I think the thing is, it's in landscape mode, so it's going in here and making this. Actually, this did this just work? No, that can't have. Maybe it worked. Hold on. It's kind of what we were mm. going for, because I haven't. It's still auto or whatever, right? So, yes. So the question is if I do this, come on. <laughs> right, I'm going to do it on the, I'm, I'm going to do it on the device cuz it'll be anyway. Okay, so that uh Oh, I need to actually I was like, oh, it only has one number. Let me just keep spinning. Keep spinning. Oh, now it's mad at me. Maybe, <sighs> maybe I didn't disconnect it properly. There we go. Oh, how come the other numbers aren't up there? Oh, there it goes. Okay, so this is in the right. This is correct. All right, so then. All right. That's cor that's correct because we haven't done the auto auto or whatever. No, that's not correct. Dang it. No, we want it to be vertical. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still not. So the multi trigger thing is not working as we thought. No. Huh. All right. This might be for another day because now it's all messed up. <laughs> so interesting. There's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. Because here now, I think now it's like, oh, this is in landscape. So make it, I don't know. No, it's in pa portrait maybe. So maybe it's confused on what it's doing. So I don't think it's what we wanted. I don't think we want this. Yeah. I don't think. But there's probably a... There's probably a... I should really make this other mode yellow again, just so we can really see it. Just to be sure the tall mode is tall. Hmm. I think the only thing that I can think about is basically making it so when you're in single pane view, make it only single page view, pane view, you know what I mean? Like when you're not spanned, set it to not left, right, or top, bottom. Right. And then I just have the other stuff in there. I mean, I don't think that's the actual way to do it, but. You, yeah, you could do that. Um, that's the other thing you can do is like hide and show. Different things. Different things. So you can have a control on both views and then have them have the trigger to hide and show one of them. Yeah. Then you need to bind to both, but. It would yes. give you the behavior you want. Because here, this is correct. This is yellow. That's good. It's just that last one. Yeah. I bet, I bet Shane would know 100%. Maybe I'll do an update to it. But I'm going to create a branch over here. You can follow along if you are. Because this is close. We're so close on it in general. But really what I'd want this to be, and the, the, there's not a mode for this. This is the thing. When yes. you're in, and you're, when you're in landscape, you can only be left and right. You can't be top bottom, right? Yeah. That's the problem. Is what I really want on the two pane view is like, hey, I'm in landscape. I'm in oh, wide no, mode. You could make it top bottom. It would just. Um, can I make this top bottom right now? Yes, because you've got um, the the thing that's pushing it 
is probably the min wide mode width. So if you made that a thousand and the min tall mode height to be much smaller or remove it. See what you can do. You can, can you edit it? I'm not even sure. Oh my gosh. 10, 1000, save. I think I have to save. Oh my gosh, and we're done. That might do it. So go back to, yeah, rotate and just see if that's the way. Okay. We want to make sure it works on all the other states. So that's correct. Yep. All right. I'm so scared. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, okay. Hands off the keyboard. <laughs> we did it. Now, are you are you thinking that? Oh, we did it with live share. We fixed it with live share. Do you think that we could just remove this 10 or, or what? what yeah, yeah, I think probably. Um, so what, what did we just change? Do you want to explain what just happened? So yeah, that min wide mode is all about, it's about the top view. It needs to be at least that wide before the second view can appear next to it. Uh, right. And if it, if it can't be that wide, it'll go under it. And if it's also too tall, it'll get pushed off the bottom underneath. But the whole, like the whole idea of two pane view is this layout system where it tries to show the first one in the top left and the second one will somehow appear next to it or under it based on all of these variables that we can change. Got it. And then if you've got a widescreen or a, a foldable display, it uses the fold as a overriding divider. And so then it forces them to be side by side. So that's kind of the the gist of it. And so those min widths just are one of the adjustments that you can make to force it to go side by side or underneath. And then the lengths are also uh, variables that you have access to, to force the layout when they are side by side or underneath. Got it. So we've kind of tweaked a little bit of both of those to get this layout. So Bill, it does. Bill's asking, what's the default? Do we even need this value? No, so the de the default's always going to be 50-50. Got it. Like the default's always going to be 50-50 and it's modified by the length being star or auto. Right? Because star uh, and auto have different for filling the con filling the space versus filling the content. I so see. yeah, if you delete all of this stuff, it'll be defaulting to 50-50 all the time. But the modes, the lengths, uh, star and auto all have different effects on how it tries to wrap or fill or expand. Cool. So yeah, it's, nice. it's very powerful to control, but it, there's a lot there. And so someone mentioned in the chat, you do end up tweaking a lot when you're doing front end work. Yeah. And this is, and this is a, a little bit of a tricky UI because in an ideal world, like I have different information in pane two where I'm, that may not be visible unless I'm spanned or whatever. I hide it when I go into. Uh, the next one in general. So like, I'm thinking about the next part would be how do we optimize this view basically? So when I yep. tap on it, it goes to, you know, if it's, if it's spanned, for example, it would show up, you know, I'll, I don't have to navigate back and forth basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that will be like, if you check out that learn course I sent back, that really talks about if you've got two content pages, yeah. You basically take the second one, you make it a view. Yep. And then you put it the view in a two pane view. And then you have the second content page, the view is in there as well. And then you use one or the other of those two things, depending on whether you're on one or two screens. Yeah. So you have that reusable view that can appear next to the list or it can appear on its own, like in a navigation stack. Got it. So you effectively reuse that chart control but you have it in a, a reusable view so that it can be in two places. Now, the, the key here is like, if I set this to, you know, 541, which is what we had it at, where now it's side by side, the, the main difference and the main key is that it would look better if we figured out how to do this, because if you were on a tablet, then it would show them side by side. Yeah. Ultimately, I think we need to get that multi-trigger sorted out yeah. or at our own layout handler in the code behind to make some specific decisions for that last layout, like to tweak it and I can a little bit more. 
on grind. And here I can set it to this 100,000 or, you know, 100,000. It'll never do it because there's no device that big. Um, yeah. Not even a TV, right? So, so this is nice because here's the thing that I just wanted to kind of show people too is what I did is this is my current view. This is my current app. And in for all intents and purposes here, when I do this, the current experience for the user is exactly the same. But when I'm on a duo or a dual screen device and I go to span it, right, we're going to get this experience where it's super nice when I'm in pro mode. And also, if I'm not in pro mode, it's not going to cut off the numbers. That's also the, the bonus of, of doing that. Now, no one would do that probably, and they'd have it side by side. Now, now this version that I have here, Craig, before we wrap up, the, the current version only has the dual screen for duo support. It's not going to do much on, it's not going to have any impact if I'm on like a uh, uh, unfoldable, right? Correct. So yes. your your iPhone and your normal Android phone are going to get the same experience that you already have, like this red bar, yep. the way it goes. And because of the size that you put on min width, it's actually going to be the same on tablets too. Okay. But that would be the, the point at which you could maybe do some tweaking and have the tablets get a tablet-like experience. Yeah, that makes sense. And that'd be the next thing for me to test is actually put this on a tablet emulator or on my Android tablet and, and start tweaking those a little bit here and there now that we know this. Yes. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's pull this away. I'm excited. All right, we did it. Craig, you spent like three hours with me. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of fun. Good. I'm glad that you had fun. I had fun too. I can't believe we got it working. That's bananas. I mean, I'm happy with the current state. And now I can do a blog post on the Surface Duo blog about my app and then get yeah, free, definitely. free self promotion. It's very cool. Like it actually wasn't too hard, you know, once we got the XAML figured out and the triggers figured out, it was, you know, kind of cool that we can do it all in markup. Yeah, that's crazy. That's awesome. All right, well, thanks everyone. Thanks Craig for your time. This actually worked for you. So, I mean, I know it's not working. But I think <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're gonna report this on the next thing, right? That's gonna be a thing. Yeah. Okay. As long as Kevin Gallo sees this, it's perfect. All right, cool. All right, well, thanks Craig for hanging out. Thanks for everyone for hanging out in the chat. I'm glad that we got it going. This will also go live later on my YouTube next week. We'll put it out there with the dual screen stuff and I'll take a screenshot of this puppy and get it up there. Very excited. And then I just got to work on an app update, get it into the app store. I'm done, easy peasy, yeah. but I'm going to create a branch. Um, this isn't public source, so maybe for the blog post, I have to do that then. There's no, no pri 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 territory information in here at all, but I should do that. All right. Well, Craig, thanks for joining me. I'm going to go on the uh, thanks for watching screen, but then you can't talk because everyone would still hear you. So I'll let you know okay. it's clear and then we can just hang out and talk. Thanks everyone for hanging out. I will talk to you all later. Um, and have a good one. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Oh, I hit the go live button. I hit the end button. All right, bye.